The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this light go. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. It is time to keep your appointment. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill 140. Sexy, 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 sexy. Uh, happy Christmas, Merry Christmas. My name is Gav. Ho, ho, ho. I'm Danta Claus. Danta Claus, indeed. Do you like that? Gavi Christmas. I don't know. There we go. I like that. Gavi Christmas. Mm. Sounds like a children's TV presenter. Hope everybody's having a good time and is happy and festive and pleasant. And if you don't uh, 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 celebrate Christmas, uh, you're just doing whatever you do. And you're happy, though. Yeah. Or if you don't like being happy, you're just, <laughs> you're sad in what you do. I don't know what to say. I suppose if you don't like to be happy and you're always annoyed and sad, but that makes you happy, surely that's you being happy. So I don't know. I'm stuck I've, with that I, now. I'm confused. I, one of my best friends is only ever happy when he's got something to moan about. And I'm not talking about you. I know, so, I know who you're talking about as well. Yeah, Rob. Um, <laughs> yeah. So some people are happy. But listen, what, what Gab's trying to say is... But that is him happy, even though he's I'm never happy. But you're happy he, not being happy. He's so not that's happy. You that's happy. His, if he hasn't got a list of things to moan about, he's not happy. He doesn't know what to do with himself. But I think, Gav, what you're trying to say to our lovely listeners is um, happy holidays, happy festivities. Even if you don't celebrate it, you might just get a half a day or a day to put your feet up. Whatever it is, relax, enjoy yourselves and enjoy this festive time. This is a very, 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 very it's a double celebration. Special episode. Double rainbow. Um this is a double celebration because this is our annual Christmas special. But the other reason this is another uh, special episode is not only is it, an, it our annual Christmas special, it's our 10th annual Christmas special, which means that this is our 10th year anniversary episode. 10 years of podcasting. It's crazy, isn't it? So may I be the first, first of all, to wish you a Merry Christmas, Gavin. Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year, and if I didn't speak to you before then. Yep. And uh, on top of that, happy fucking anniversary, my friend. <laughs> I know, 10 years. A bit weird, isn't it? <clears throat> 10 years. That's longer than a lot of people have had jobs. Yeah, yeah. Um, I absolutely adore podcasting. <laughs> um, I love doing it. I was doing it last night with my lovely lady. A uh, new episode of High Strange Podcast, which we did Christmas Murder. So if you don't like happiness and you want a bit of death at Christmas, you can pop over there and listen to that. Um, I Yeah, I love podcasting. I love podcasting with you. Um, I love talking about horror movies. If we didn't podcast, I'd still be talking to you about horror movies. Just wouldn't be a microphone there. Yeah, exactly, exactly that. And we were get, going to get into all of that today. So let's run through what what this episode is about. Obviously, it's our festive episode, so we're going to be getting very festive and Christmassy. We're going to start off by talking about Christmas, what we like to do, tradition, what we've been doing, what films we've been watching. Um, our main review, which you already know because you clicked on this, is we're only doing one film because we've got lots of other stuff to talk about, but um, our main review is is going to be National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation from 1989. Um, Because even though it's not a horror film, it's got some pretty um, gnarly elements to it. I think, you know, the whole obstacles of family at Christmas and uh, the lighter side of it, perhaps, but also the darker side of it. So that's going to be a very fun one. It's it's quite a, a out there in the sort of cult hemisphere i'd say really i know it's not genre but uh it is um it's there with a massive fan base of uh you know it's john hughes as well it's not a straight average christmas movie it's, it's no. a little bit a little bit off the side there also, and it's just enjoyable fun so we thought fuck it well it's both of our you know in our top five christmas yeah, films it. of yeah. all time we really love it and what fun to talk about so we're yeah. going to be doing that and we're also going to be taking a trip down memory lane where we're going to talk about the last 10 years of podcasting um what that means to us what you know what we what what how our lives have changed in those 10 years what we've been favorite memories films franchises and just 
really just shoot the shit really and uh pretend that you know we're in the same room yep. with a, a glass of whiskey not that either of us drink we, um in front of a, an open fire how many years ago was that when we podcast in front of an open no. fire which is get drunk. I, I i've actually heard of some of our listeners and thank you listeners for being listeners all this time and listening to us I'll say listen a few more times. Listen, listen. listen. Um, I remember one of our listeners uh, possibly saying to us at one point, uh, our, ba- our older episodes are audio quality. Not as good. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think we kind of, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that because I. it's not like I've got better because it's in 10 years. I'm still doing, I don't know. Well, I think I think we have got better. I think we've been doing it long enough that we... We can record. We don't really edit much. I never edit um, any of our stuff. It, it, you know, the odd, odd odd time we might take something out or add something in, or, or or something might distract one of us, and we have to like quickly stop recording for whatever reason. But we can do this. You know, we set aside an evening for anyone that doesn't know, and we just sit down and we record, um, and we take breaks. You know, as as the breaks you hear throughout the episode. But oh, we could do, we could we could do like a YouTube video behind the scenes. This is how we make a podcast. BGS. everybody knows. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, there was an episode where you and I sat with a fire, so you'd have heard the fireplace crackling away, and us. But we would have been sharing because just amateur. Because like the same <clears throat> device I record our show on. Uh, if, oh, I'll tell you what, it's a Zoom H4n, which I use for all our filmmaking as well. This is the most, I love this device, uh, 200 quid, uh, I bought it 12 years ago. It's fucking amazing. Uh, you can get it super cheap now, and um, really good if you want to start podcasting, just for to give you that and make a model. It's pretty hardy as well, but as well, we, you know, yeah, it's dirty. Uh, but with Sarah, for example, I have a mic going, uh, an ex- extra mic uh, going direct into it, as well as a mic I've got on it going into it so I could we could both talk but when me and you used to do it it would have been just that mic in the middle of the room <laughs> and it's not like we were nose to nose so we'd be like hey, how are you doing yeah, I'm not but bad. we did sit very happened. close to each other on the sofa to, to try to make the sound just, as good as we but could it's terrible so those episodes would just be kind of like whack documentary style audio of just one mic in a room somewhere with someone talking you can't really hear them but I think it's safe to say podcasting has come a long way for everybody, for the, for, for, you know, for the whole world in 10 years. Because I think when we started out, it wasn't, it was still relatively new. You know, it was probably been going for a year or two, but people were still finding their feet there really. No one was like, there was no Joe Rogan's or, or that kind of thing. You know, people weren't getting paid off of it. Not that we're getting paid off of it. But. I'm not sure when Joe Rogan did start, actually. He probably was around 10 years, I'd have thought. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, you got to think the advent of the smartphone was not till uh, 2010, uh, with Apple's the first iPhone. And um, that would have been a lot easier for people to listen to podcasts on the go. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. It's not just about the recording it. It's then about people being able to... How they would listen if they're not yeah, just at home based on a computer or in the office, which people would do as well. Uh, when I check out the stats for Sarah and I's show, the High Strangers podcast, uh, I could see what devices listen. It's crazy, isn't it? So I could see if it's a desktop or whatever. <clears throat> and most Gab of, can most see of the time, you. I can, can see, see what you're doing. And most of the time, it's Apple, iTunes on, um, uh, I think, smartphones. Um most of the time, you know, and you can sort of see what it is. But yeah, back in the day, not so many people did it. So that's, that's, that's and this is cool. what we're doing. Yeah. Well, it's Christmas time. Um, so let's start things off festively. I've got some mince pies in the kitchen, which I'll be eating periodically on our breaks. I fucking loved yesterday. I made a bubble, bubble and squeak out of leftovers. Can you explain to anyone not from the UK what bubble and squeak is? It's a very British meal. <laughs> The bubble and squeak is basically what happens when you do the cooking. Um, you um, <clears throat> get your leftovers from a, 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 a traditional roast dinner, so you know your, your turkey, your potato, your vegetables, any f- other little bits, and you have to have um, pretty much fifty percent potato to whatever else you have because potato is the form that sticks it all together. And you get a frying pan, you put some oil in it, and a knob of butter, and um, put all your leftovers in. Um, I actually dice mine up a bit, so it's super fine. That's my way of doing it. And then you put it in a pan for about 15, 20 minutes with a masher. You kind of just mash it. This is like the new cooking podcast we're doing. Welcome yeah. to the kitchen Dad, on Haunted Hill. Cooking. And um, <laughs> you mash it together and eventually it forms together like a big patty. Um, and it's then that, that's it. But it's it's the flavours of every bit of the roast dinner in every 
by all combined as it's gorgeous you could do it any food you could do it with any leftovers you could do bubble and squeak and it's called that because it squeaks and it bubbles as you're cooking it yep there not so go. much bubbles to put on only if really got liquid going on really bubbles but when I was a kid, my mum had two budgies called Bubble and Squeak oh, as well. Yeah. So there we go. That's well, a little... I said to my, but yeah. I, I put around to my parents and I said to my dad, oh, have a good Christmas, Gav. And I was like, yeah, yeah, dad, no worries, yeah. I um, said, tell you what, my Bubble and Squeak. I said, best thing in it. It's better than Christmas dinner. That is the Bubble and Squeak. I said, I think I'll move you. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I've got I, some mince pies to snack on. Another thing, very quickly, cause, uh, uh, as well, my parents bought my parents a uh, air fryer for uh, Christmas. My dad was a chef in the navy. He's old now. He 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 he's he's not bothered about being here. He'd be happy when he's dead. He's, he's just the way he is now. He he don't want to go anywhere. He stays in the house. Don't want to speak to anyone. Fuck off, everybody. That sort of thing. That's how he is. So I got him an air fryer. Did he want it? Fuck, did he? No way. Does he want an air fryer? Told no my mum. No, I'm not using it. Could change. It's different. It's my like, dad it was makes the same. Your life easy. My dad was the same. I bought him a CD player. <laughs> 15 years oh, ago, not, 20 not, years Not a couple of days ago. Yeah, Dad, got your CD player in 2023. He said, what him the and mum looked at me and said, they said, we're not going to use it. And then within about five years, they had a library of hundreds of CDs. Same thing happened. I bought them a DVD player. When, this you know, is five, what, probably five years after this, DVDs were a thing. This is exactly what I told you. You've got to get him a dog. And not every dog, he says, fuck off. You'd love a dog if you had one. Well, my dad's got a Blu-ray player now. Buggy. Oh, I bet, yeah, yeah. You know, he's all over it. But um, I've got some strawberry milk. I'm really into chocolate and strawberry milk this year. Um, so I've been buying cartons of that. Um, and I, a carton of, I had a carton of eggnog as well, which is nice. The, the, cause I, I don't drink anymore. I haven't drank for uh, uh, four and a half years. But when I used to have my sp- bouts of sobriety, I ended up getting addicted to chocolate milk. Yeah, chocolate milk, strawberry milk. I've been buying those. I don't know why. And, but it's very festive as well. Yeah. Um, and my in-laws bought me a huge tray of really high quality um cocaine no um was it really good? <laughs> really high quality gingerbread and my god i am fucking addicted to this stuff to the point that my wife gave me a kiss good night last night i was staying up late watching santa's sleigh um and i was sat there with my glass of strawberry milk and she gave me a kiss and she went right you need to stop eating this gingerbread and i said what she went you stink of gingerbread I can smell it on your breath. You've got a crumb of it in your beard. You keep going in the kitchen, and I know what you're doing. You keep going in there. How much is left in the box? And I say, oh, I don't know, I've left some for the kids. You're going to be using gingerbread. <laughs> I love gingerbread, man. Out of everything. <laughs> gingerbread man. <clears throat> gingerbread Dan. Gingerbread Dan. Can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread Dan. Um, but we won't be eating whilst we record. We'll do all our eating no, in the break. No, I've been told off. Don't gobble your nuts while we're recording. I'm not allowed to do munching while we're recording. Oh, God. if anyone's going to gobble your nuts, it'll be me. All right? <laughs> Hello. So a good hundred moles between us, but all right. No. You've got, <coughs> you got long balls, yeah, so I it's do, fine. I do. I have. I, no. Why am I telling you that? <laughs> I, <laughs> I love the honesty. This is... This is many years of friendship and ten years of podcasting. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like I'm happy though. It's not like uh, this is going out to the world, so it's fine. I am. Um, uh, you completely fucking throw me. All right, you throw me. Fuck it. Well, look. Uh, let's start talking about what we've been watching, what we like to watch. Let's start off with um, anything we've watched recently that's quite new. I know you're very excited to talk to me about a film called uh, Hands of Steel. <laughs> it's not new, new though. It's not. I know, I know, but I still want to hear about oh, it. Oh man, Hands of Steel. Um, I might tell you what. Let me just put it up for a second. What about the synopsis? Well, Three. Uh, Basically, hands are still. Last night I said to Sarah, I, I, I managed to get to see Sarah this Christmas. I didn't think I was going to. And managed to get to see her, and it was our last night together. I mean, you know, you don't see each other that much. So, like, what are we going to watch? It has to be something like, it's really frustrating. You get to the end of the day and go, that's a fucking waste of two hours. We could have just sat here chatting or something, you know? And um, I found this movie on Amazon Prime from, oh, it's 1986. <clears throat> it, um, it's not like I'm doing a review, but I'm going to do the synopsis. Please do, because you've been banging on about this, so I want to hear. Oh, I told about <laughs> it. Uh, uh, I had some friends come over earlier, and I was chatting to them about it. Oh, no, I've got to read all. A cyborg is programmed to kill a scientist who holds the fate of mankind in his hands. I'm all over this straight away. A cyborg is programmed to kill a scientist who holds the fate of... And it's, the scientist in question is John Saxon. 
Fuck me. He fails, and it's an Italian film. He fails and hides in a diner. He fails and hides in a diner run by a woman who likes him. She likes him. She wants some dick. The people who sent him here sent him what? Sent him are after him. So is the local arm wrestling champ. That is really bad. What? The local arm wrestling champ? Right. This dude escapes from John Saxon, and he's basically massive. He's kind of your Schwarzenegger type, but he's kind of char- char- charismatic as well, in a sort of way. It's a bit weird. I don't know, kind of. He wasn't just, like, completely brain dead. Do you know what I mean? That's what he kind of possibly thought. He escapes, and he manages to... Uh, get to this bar out of diner and it happens to be a load of rough guys in there sort of motorbike gang type that but this woman's like I need some work done can you help me out for for bed and board and he's like yeah no worries no problem trouble is that they're all like there's a there's a guy there who is called um he is basically the uh, arm wrestling champion of the town amazing uh Bra- uh, Bronco, I think he's called, or something like, or Blanco, or something like that, and his pictures up on the wall as well, you know. But you got all these other guys there, and they're basically just like all having arm wrestling competitions. Then he's there, and they just uh, there's this bit where he gets a bit of toyed up. They, the bad guys, he there's one particular guy he doesn't get along with. He gets the waitress. When she sends him out to go get some beer for him out the back and come back for she, uh, some toilet paper to take over to him, he reads it and it says, you'll need this to wipe your ass from this shit after you shit yourself for, for me beating you arm wrestling. It's really bad. <clears throat> it's a great movie, by the way. I mean, I've just looked at the poster and it looks fantastic from the poster the, art. The poster was what in the video shop back in the day, that was that movie would have got it. And I'd been happy. I was over the moon of this film, like I'm telling you now. So, it, so he it sounds down. like um, <clears throat> it sounds like the Terminator meets over the top, but yeah. done with John Saxon in Italian yeah, style. Yeah, with big laser guns as well. That's another point. Oh, come on. And he looks down and he starts writing something on the kitchen worktop, snaps it off and throws it on the table at them because they gave it. And it just says, <laughs> you're on. That's it. It's like, that's a bit of a waste. So anyway, he beats the guy and all this sort of stuff. And then there's other stuff, though. You've got John Saxon and his guys and the FBI after them. Um, after him, because he's, like, out of control. But there's a segue to our last episode in this. A uh, One of the main actors, Claudio Cassini, uh, and an aircraft, a helicopter pilot, crashed and died in the making of this. Oh, wow. Interesting. John Saxon, uh, yeah. uh, 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 sort of because of SAG, that's the Screen Actors Guild, um, because he, I think it's Screen, um, because he was uh, going to keep into their rules, he said, I won't shoot anything in America, I'll just do all my shots in Italy. And the helicopter crash was in America, and he would have been in the pl- helicopter. Bloody hell. So John Saxon would have died in the 80s. Thank God he didn't. Mm. Um, anyway... I really enjoyed this film. Well, I've just added it to my watch list. It's on Prime for free to watch if you've got Prime. So, uh, get, get on Hands that. of Steel. Just Everybody get watch on that it. shit. Honestly, it's so good. I it, love it when you come across or, you know, or I come across oh, one of these. Amazon sort of, Prime is a beauty for that. Um, like when I recommended that Island of Death to you. Um, it's just yeah, a film you watched that. It. I, and Sarah says uh, uh, we should cover it. I was yeah, like, yeah, I, I think I we think could we probably. Should. It would be a fun discussion. It, that's the thing, though, because sometimes certain movies visually might not about be good, but audibly doing a podcast or reviews, it comes across so much better. But anyway, Hands Are Still from 1986 is 1800 uh, hour and 30 minutes. Just fucking get on that. Get on it. Well, I discovered a hidden gem myself from the 80s, which um, a lot of people will all know, already know about. Um, but I, I believe it's a German or French film. It's called Deadly Games from 1989. And basically, it's like Home Alone. Oh, but, yeah, I know it, yeah. But Home Alone meets it's, uh, uh, Halloween, I guess. Yeah, uh, I, think, I think they're a bit gutted. It's because it wasn't American. If it had been American, um, you know, it might have been possibly picked up well, they, before. They, but... they actually tried to sue John Hughes, but he, he was able to prove that Home Alone was already in production. But it's about a young boy who lives in a, a huge mansion because his parents are rich, but he's on his own and he lives there with his grandfather. And then a man, a really creepy guy dressed as Santa, breaks in and uh, tries to kill him and his dog and his grandfather. And he basically has to home alone the shit out of it. But it's really brutal because he's European. 
Um, and I, I think I'll probably watch it again next Christmas because, you know, like the first viewing of something, you're just like, what? So I think my second viewing of that would be really good. So, yeah, I love discovering these hidden gems. Um, I've not really watched anything new other than stuff I discussed in our last episode, like Something in the Barn or um, Werewolf Santa or Violent Night. Um, but is there anything else you wanted to talk about before we move on to just sort of traditional or favourite Christmas films to watch? I got a Columbo box set from Sarah for Christmas and uh, watched a Vincent Price and Martin Sheen episode and it was really enjoyable. Yeah, Columbo is, we've talked about Columbo before, it's a very well crafted. You don't, just, they just didn't, they don't make them like I used to. It's just you know? kind of enjoyable, but it's it's my age I am as well. Like if I'd been a 17 year old, I'd be like, I'm not fucking sitting here watching this for an hour and a half. The age I am now, quite happily just sit there and go okay we because of the formula of the way it works we know who did the killing we've seen that in the first 15 minutes <clears throat> now we've got to figure out how Columbo's going to figure it out and it's such fun and that's it. actually i take back what i said they do make them what they used to i believe in the last five years tv is actually really yeah incredible now um and people you know you've got big hollywood actors appearing in tv shows now that are incredible you know some of the star wars stuff on disney plus some people don't like it but some people do some people are saying it's the best Star Wars stuff since start the originals and then there's other stuff there's a lot of good crime stuff out there and there's been some great horror shows as well so actually TV is very good but um yeah Fargo it was a really good crime show Fargo, I've only yeah. seen the first few seasons but I've uh, seen the first three I want to see the new one actually it's on, it's on Amazon Prime also I've got all four yes, seasons is, yeah. for free that's, that's how I watched the third season yeah I need to do um, a, 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 I'll probably just jump onto the fifth one that's a new one I should really do the full I one. haven't seen I'll probably watch season four but um, I'm not in a rush because they're quite slow paced but they are very enjoyable mm. Um, okay, well, let's talk about, aside from National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, which we're going to cover in great detail, Christmas favourites to watch for, and some of these I'm sure you will agree with as well, um, you know, you tell me yours, I'll tell you mine, as they say. I tell you, I've got a soft spot over the years, the last sort of 10 years, and I really love, I always try and watch Jingle All The Way. It's so cheesy and silly, but... I had it on the background this year for Elijah, because um, Elijah and I, whenever he's over, we're like... He doesn't have a bedroom here. He's, <laughs> the living room's his bedroom with me, you know. And uh, so we're always together a lot. So in the background, while he's playing and stuff, I put on Jingle All The Way. It's just so good. Um, you know, and it just makes you feel festive, really. I also watched, and I do watch this every year, probably, since we saw it at Fright Fest, Better Watch Out, which <clears throat> is just an incredible film that came out for Christmas. Yeah, I, uh, uh, Elijah... <laughs> And Charlie, formerly known as Jay, um, watched um, it because uh, they're like, no, I haven't seen that. I was like, are you sure you haven't seen that? Because I, I swore that that's the perfect movie for us two to watch. Yeah. And they hadn't. So we sat and watched it and they it's really good, enjoyed it. It's a good gateway horror for, you know. I've, early... I've kind of just, with Elijah, I've kind of just, recently he showed me a Netflix TV show called One Piece that he's just um, yeah. insanely mad awesome. with. But it's a 15, and I've watched it all, all the way through. He's watched it multiple times, like you would when you were a kid, you used to watch the same videotape right over and over. <laughs> and um, he's obsessed with it, and it's a 15. I was like, this is a 15, though. No. And then I was like, hang on, he's 10 next year. Like, and I went, sort of thought about my own. And I'm not a psychopath. I've not killed anyone. I'm not going to go and get a hockey mask and knife anyone up. <clears throat> And uh, I just thought, oh, fuck it up. So I've dropped it at a bar a little bit of him, and I was showing him a few 15 horror movies here and there. Yeah, and you know what? My dad did the same with me. He he understands effects because he's been with me when my, I've been making films. My dad did the same with me. He introduced me to the Bruce Lee movies around about the age of 10. Yeah. You know, and then yeah, once I was, once that was okay, I then got into stuff that had a bit more violence in it, and then things like sitting down and watching The Thing, you know, and already seen. We grew up watching movies that shouldn't really have been aimed at children, like some of the Indiana Jones scenes, Jules. These movies that definitely are questionable, really, when they came out. Um, even the stuff like the Twilight Zone feels a bit kid-friendly, but actually, when you sit and watch it, you realise, wow, there's stuff in this that was would have really affected people. I, I do feel, though, in a way, a lot of this stuff is good. Like, I was um, <clears throat> watching horror movies when I was quite young, and when it comes down to it, I, you learn lessons from these movies. 
because you see these idiots do really stupid things. You're like, why'd you do that? And you just you learn stuff from movies. Um, and uh, along so I don't think it's too like uh, uh, we're getting into the realms <coughs> of rape or uh, uh, mental abuse or torture or anything like that um, or animal torture. I think I think you could get away with a lot of things with. Uh, I think it's not. I don't think they're bad lessons on these films. Yeah, and I think the only that's the only area my parents drew the line was they didn't they weren't comfortable with me watching sex scenes at a young age. And to be honest, I wasn't comfortable because a I didn't really I, understand I, what I was watching, and secondly, if I was I remember watching Ghost with my mum and dad. Yeah, I've watched sex scenes um, with my kids. Well, and when that scene sorry. happened with with Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore really getting it on. You know, it's all fun and games at the uh, pottery table, but then it gets really hot and heavy. And I remember my dad pausing it going, right, well, that's enough of that. I think um, me and mum will watch the rest of this, make sure it's okay for you guys. And I remember thinking, well, what, what's happened? It's so bad. What? And it made it seem even weirder and seedier to me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because you're going upstairs to bed going, what's going on then? And you're going what's imagine, Patrick Swayze doing? You can imagine what happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, I Has did. he got a clay penis? What's going on? But yeah, um... Also, you know, every year I watch Home Alone, the first Home Alone. It's got to be watched. It's an absolute classic. And again, I'm trying. I'm sitting there with yeah. my two two-year-olds. We had Home Alone on. Yep. I'm trying to explain to them because they're getting upset because the, the burglars are getting hit in the head with bricks. You know, they're getting their heads set on fire, and they're looking at me going, "Daddy, he needs a plaster. Daddy, he needs a doctor." And I'm like, "Fuck, he does. He does need a doctor." Can you imagine that if at Home Alone was that it's Joe Pesci saying happens to him if he goes to hospital, comes back. It's something happens and off they go to the hospital, come back. Just it's like your it's for your twins friendly. Fucking hell. What a different movie. It, but, well, I mean, but, but, the, it, but the hospital didn't question it. They patch them up and send them back because in your kids' mind, they need that. In. No, one there's no questions. Had, he just keeps going back and comes back with another bandage. Goes back, comes out. One guy had four degree burns all over his head. I don't know what happened to him, but um, bandage it looked like he'd been hit in the head with four bricks. Plastic. Strange. Um, but yeah, I've got to watch Home Alone every year as well. Um, I watched Rare Exports again. Uh, yeah, I've seen it for a few years. Uh, I well, bought, I thought I, it was fitting because yeah, I bought the family you, a few years. Ago. As you remember, we covered that as our first film we ever covered. Old man's cock. Um, ten years ago. Yeah, and God, there's a lot of old man's cocks in that flapping around in the wind at the end it's, of it. It's not best when you get into high def, is it? You know, I used to have it on Blu-ray, so yeah, that was. If Same. you're going to see an army of naked old men swarming your village, you want to see it in high definition, Gav, really. Every grey pube, you want to see it. Every swinging testy. <laughs> but yeah, it's, that is a good one, Rare Exports. Um, uh, I also watched a couple of the classics, like Black Christmas. Oh, yep. Yeah. Sarah and I did Black Christmas. Still, Christmas, Day, really? Christmas Day night for me every year is Black Christmas. Gets under my skin, doesn't it? Fucking so. love it. It's really... I also watched for the first time Bob Clark's other Christmas film as well. What a Christmas story! Never watched it before. It's my favourite Christmas film of all time. Uh, I really enjoyed that, and we... it's, and it's Kolchak as his dad. Yeah, that's why I always think you always mention Kolchak. I'm like, what the guy from Christmas Story is like? Well, he's no, more for famous. Me, for me, he's, he's more the guy from for Kolchak for me. Christmas so, yeah. Story is like um, probably the the American cult Christmas film, but. Somehow, my family recorded it when I was about eight or nine off of television, and we watched it every year. And now I own it, um, and I it hit differently this year because I'm a dad and my kids really get a Christmas. And that scene where he, him and his wife sit back and just let their kids tear into the presents, I just thought they work so hard to get everything they can for their kids. It's also crazy, funny, silly, that, sentimental. It does happen, though, when you have children every time. You go back to the movie every year, not just Christmas, different films as well. You start to see them different. Yeah. And then totally. you start to change your opinion of things. And then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I quite like the mum and dad. And I used to think they're twats. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm like, fuck them kids. <laughs> well, I'm funny enough, like with Home Alone, because my kids have watched, probably watched that about 10, 15 times in the last two or three weeks. And I realise that Kevin McAllister is a bit of a little dick. And actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. his mum is quite sweet, but he calls her a moron. You know, and OK, yeah, he, he gets into a situation where he's a bit stitched up and he gets picked on perhaps a little bit by his brothers and cousins. But he's not very nice to his mum at times. So a good life lesson for him there to be left he, alone for a week in a house. Yeah, because he's not. He was basically I was watching it with Elijah. I was like, you're about the same age. <laughs> 
I think he's eight years old, so he's, he's so slightly younger. So we were asking under. Elijah, what would you do? And he's just like, uh, and he's just because he'd all he cared about was his tablet. Anyway, so we were watching Home Alone. But um, <clears throat> yeah, he's not even a teenager. If he's a teenager, I would understand that response. So yeah, Elijah would never speak to me like that. Well, Home Alone these days, anyway, you've got the internet. So if I was, you know, if I'd left the kids at home accidentally on purpose, <laughs> I tried to introduce uh, Elijah to the Terminator. Uh, Terminator Two. I didn't feel the first Terminator was. Uh, I thought it was a bit too dark. So I think the Terminator second one 2. is a bit more kid friendly. Yeah, uh, definitely. He wasn't really interested. He watched a bit of it, but I said to him, "Would you want a Terminator to look after you?" Do you know what he said to me? Why do I need a Terminator when I've got you, and you're the strongest and kindest person I know? Wow. And that made me very happy. And I was like, job done! Yes! That's good, man. respect for my son. Yeah, it's nice to feel like you're a hero to your kids, definitely. My kids tell me I've got big muscles. Yeah. But I haven't. They clearly don't know their dad. Um, And last night, funny enough, just last night, Edith didn't want to... She struggles to get off to sleep at the moment. So I have to lie in the room with her and sort of stroke her hair. And last night she said... I like you, Daddy. I said, why? She said, because you've got big, soft hands. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. And I thought, I came out and said to Alice, I've got big, soft hands. Yeah. She went, right. <laughs> I'm happy. It's a compliment. Yeah, I was very stoked to my compliment. So... <laughs> well, you are, the, you, you are the biggest and strongest person I know as well, Gav. <laughs> and I wouldn't, I wouldn't need the Terminator if, if you were around. I'd look after you. I'm, but after I'm not me. big. Would you pick me up on a motorcycle and drive me through some um, bioducts. sewer bioduct things? And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I can't ride a motorbike, so we crash, but yeah. Well, but I'd shit, still like that you try. It's a shit movie when I come back naked in the street. Imagine, imagine you walking naked into a bar full of bikers. Fucking dangling testicles. All right, who's got a fucking bike for right, me then? I need you, all right, I'm going to do it in a Michael Caine voice. I need your motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> and your clothes and your boots. Another festive favourite of mine, which I watched the other night, and got, as always, a bit teary at the end, was Scrooged, because some people don't like the ending of that movie. I've not seen but, it since we covered it. But, but Bill Murray, just that speech he gives at the end, man, and the fact he's got real tears in his eyes, just great. And also, it's it's got some really good horror elements in that, man, as well. well some I, of the ghosts well, are great. All the Scrooge <clears throat> ones are good. Last year, I really enjoyed watching the George C. Scott Scrooge. George A. Scott. George A. Scott. I really enjoyed watching him be Scrooge. At one point, one of the, one of his pro- it's always the Ghost of Christmas Past is always the best one. It's always like the gothic-y, the big, the creepy one. Yeah, that's the one everyone looks forward to because they're like, what's he going to look like in this one? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty spooky stuff. <clears throat> Obviously, I've watched Die Hard. Oh, um, yep, 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 Sarah and I did Die Hard. It's another staple of mine. Um, I had to do I, on Boxing Day, though. But, uh, yeah. I used to think I really liked Die Hard too, and I do like it, but it, it, it's nothing compared to the first one. The first one is just... No, but it's still enjoyable. I think the first one is a... I would give it a 10 out of 10. It's a pretty perfect film, really. The cast, the lines, you know, everything about it, really. It's, and for the first time, I got emotional at the end, you know, when Al and uh, John find each other. This year, I was thinking, feeling a bit uh, festive, and I thought, wow... They're in love. I'd like to see a spin-off where him and Al run off together. <clears throat> uh, and and uh, Argyle drives them. Yeah. Dun, He's there driving. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> his, tunes, his tunes are always so banging. He's so funny. Made me realise that uh, Christmas and Hollis by Randy MC is probably my top five Christmas film songs of all time. Oh, yeah. I walked in CEX the other day and uh, it's just finishing. I was gutted. Gutted. Whenever I hear it, I'm like, it's Christmas time in and Hollis. while I was in there, I picked up National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation on Blu-ray, which was quite handy. I never that got to see handy. the see, uh, the uh, commentary track, which I was going to do, I uh, gutted for. And I'm gutted that I never did the Danny, Randy Quaid sequel. Oh, I've done it. Oh, great. You it's can tell so us about it. Let us, know, let us know at the end okay. of the first one. Yeah. Um, last night, when everyone was all tucked up in bed... I've watched two more and then I'll stop then and we'll talk about, we'll get into other things. Um, I watched the calendar, which we covered the advent calendar last year, which still holds up because we both really enjoyed that. And that was a lot darker than we thought it was going to be. Um, and that was great. So if anybody hasn't seen that, it's a French film, I believe French or Belgian. I think it's French about a woman in a wheelchair who gets a mysterious advent calendar, sort of a great big box with doors all over it. And 
if she doesn't follow the rules of the advent calendar, it's a bit like Jigsaw meets the ring kind of thing. It was, it's very creepy. And there's some really good deaths and gory stuff going on it. Listen to our review like, from last year. Yeah, last year's episode. And then to finish up the evening, as I sat there with my glass of strawberry milk and my <laughs> my gingerbread while my wife told me off, I watched... Just consuming sugar. <laughs> I was just literally... That's why I didn't go to bed till <laughs> midnight. a fucking hard line. <laughs> It's Christmas. Um, I watched Santa's Sleigh, which I think we covered many years ago with Bill Goldberg, the wrestler, um, yeah, go, yeah. running around town with a great big bull or a howl, a hell deer, as he calls it, just killing old ladies and anyone that gets in his way, basically. And that's a good, fun film. Um, so I've been watching lots and I've still, you know, we've still got a few days, you know, so I'll still be watching lots of Christmas stuff over the next few days as well. Still want to check out Fat Man, which I know you, you said is a good one. So that's another one to check out for me. And even though it's getting dissed, I'm going to check out um, It's a Wonderful Knife. Still want to check that one out as well. But I know it's getting dissed. But I will probably check it out. Anything else you've watched or any other traditional films you like to sit uh, and watch? I've just you, been doing all the Annie Falls and Horses. You watched It's a Wonderful Life, didn't you? Just like... Um, I didn't get through all of it because I was doing it while I was cooking. So quite a long one, that one. Yeah, and I did enjoy it, but it was a case of like, I was pausing at times of the next people coming in to talk to me and then we're leaving the kitchen again and I'd carry on cooking. I wasn't cooking in my own kitchen. I was cooking in the ex-wife's kitchen. And also, that's what um, the mum in Gremlins watches. Yeah, she's I know. Cooking. And that was kind of... I kind of dig that, that I was doing that, you know, while I was cooking. Um... I did watch Gremlins as well. And that's that's probably another film that we watched at a very young age, talking of our earlier topic. When you look back at it now, you think, Jesus Christ, man, there was she was putting these things in the blender, in the microwave. <laughs> uh, well that <coughs> I do apologize, I've got a bit of a cold at being that time of year. Uh, that's what made me feel sick. Uh, <clears throat> I went around my friend's house as a kid and his mum gave us tomato soup and said, Yeah, I'll watch the gremlins. Oh. So I sat and ate a bottle of bowl of soup you know <clears throat> and it got to that scene and the blending the green stuff and I, I i can remember it like it was this morning honestly yeah. i can remember walking out the stairs uh walking out of the living room exactly and sitting on the like third or fourth step up and just sitting there and i could hear it going on and i was like no i couldn't watch it i was, I was little the two, the weirdest, the two scenes for me that really hit me as a kid were the dog being hung in the christmas lights because I'd never seen an animal harmed that I can remember in a film up until that point. And I, I was probably eight, nine when I watched Gremlins. And I thought, Jesus Christ, these things have hung a dog. You know, <clears throat> I didn't didn't know that he was dead. I just knew that he was hanging from the lights. The other scene, though, which still holds up so well, is when the Gremlins in the Christmas tree and it attacks Billy's mum. That looks so sinister and good, man. Mm. The, the effects for <clears throat> Gremlins. If you, haven't, if you haven't watched it for years, guys... Go back and watch it and just marvel at the effects work on that movie. It's, it still holds up incredibly well. Gizmo looks like a real little creature, you know. And, okay, you might be able to figure out where puppets were, puppete puppeteers were hiding and things like that. But, my God, that film holds up so well. And it's so much fun as well. Uh, so did, much fun. I turned up to Sarah's house Christmas Day evening after I'd been cooking and with the, uh, the kids and stuff. And um, I turned up there and they were playing board games and uh, watching Gremlins 2. Gremlins 2. So I kind of sat there and watching Gremlins 2 <clears> in the background <throat> while they were playing Monopoly for hours and hours. Mm, Monopoly. Oh, you sounded like Alan Rickman then. Oh, Monopoly. Mr. McLean, would you like to be the top hat if we play Monopoly? Mr. McLean, should we play Monopoly? Hmm... Monopoly. Elliot is a piece of shit. Just a very quick side note. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah <clears throat> I could hear a comment. And I'm like, dick, what a dick. Because it is uh, him trying to. Oh, it's when he's trying to say, show the watch. Show the watch. Uh, Hans, Bobby. Bobby. Honestly, like, I know he's a, he's fairly innocent. I mean, when he gets blown knight. away, when he gets blown away, I'm always like, yeah. Ah, it's just like what fucking coke adult thoughts did it make him go? Yeah, I've got. I could. Do, what are you going to give? How are you going to just go? Bruce Whisker go? Yeah, all right. Don't know you. I'll finish. I'll come back down. Insane. Why, Ellis? Who do you hate more, Ellis 
from Die Hard or Walter Peck from Ghostbusters, who is also in Die Hard in a oh, different shit. character. Oh, shit, that's a good combo. Who, I thought you could yeah. say, like, Franklin. I was like, no, 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 these two. Those these two, two are like... These two are like... Walter like, Peck. Because they're like little weasels that get under your skin. No, I don't like Walter Peck. And I'm I'm not speaking of Walter Peck as for Ghostbusters because he's not like one either. But I mean in this because he's in Die Hard 2 as well. And... Mm. Not that good. Did he does, come back Holly, for any other Die Hards, did he? I don't think he did. Did no. Holly punch him at the end of Die Hard? She does, doesn't she? At the end of the first one, yeah. Yeah, she knocked it out good. Well, I'm glad that he got punched, and I'm glad that Ellis got killed, quite frankly. Good to meet. Uh, th- th- they think um, Bruce Willis um, is, is mental. Uh, I don't know what the uh, name He's got some... what he has, but they think it, it actually was from an accident on a... Um, a film set, actually, they're thinking. It, it's a form of dementia. Um, mm, I think where, it's a, a film set in the 90s where he had an accident and hit his head or something. And this, um, he, he's basically lost the ability to communicate now, but he still okay. knows what's going on ish. But um, this explains why, and we've really gone been mean about it but we didn't know but over the last sort of 10 years his career is him picking up little tiny snippets yeah. here and there you know and he it's because he I, I should imagine he was struggling to remember some of his lines yeah. he didn't know it though at the time you know we all just assumed he's been oh he's phoned in another performance he's being lazy but actually so i wonder what kevin smith who famously really ragged on him when they made that uh, cop movie together i wonder what he thinks of because i know he they cop really out. butted heads yeah which i quite enjoyed cop out to be honest uh, but actually no because <clears throat> i uh listened to probably one of the first podcasts i ever listened to literally was a kevin smith one interviewing the dude who made looper ryan johnson yep and he worked with bruce willis and um <clears throat> oh was it him or was it someone else it was a first time filmmaker and they worked Bruce Willis and they were really good and Kevin Smith's like what well, he's good for you he's like yeah it's fucking amazing he's like oh well I know Shyamalan and, and him get on really <clears throat> well as well well apparently it used to be that Bruce would be quite good with first time directors for some reason like really championing them like first time filmmakers uh, but then someone like Kevin Smith I don't know but it's weird though because he was quite friendly with Die in Die Hard 4 and that's when they met well, I think I was talking to my dad on the phone the other night about Die Hard, oh, as you cool. as you do, and um, I said to him like, hands down, that's the, Bruce's best performance. And people might think of it as a dumb action film, but it's so much more no, to it no, than no, that. No, no, it's not. It's not. I, well, I know that's what I'm saying. Like people think of that film as an action film, but and it is an action film, but there is so much to it it's layered and the story and, and, and like I say, Bruce's performance is phenomenal in that. Um, but Die Hard is definitely in my in my top five for, I had, for I had Christmas. To sort of, I couldn't help it. I had to do it again with Sarah. I took a reminisce over my uh, sneaking onto Nakatomi Plaza and being right in front of the glass door, standing there and going, "Oh my god, oh my god!" Because I'd just gone through some back door up some fucking thing, just snuck on there. Then the guards came out and I was like, "Oh, they're used they've to their guns." No, they, they weren't used to the fact that I was there. They're like, "How the fuck did you get up here? Uh, that that door." <laughs> A similar thing happened when I went into the library from Ghostbusters when I was in New York and I walked into the library and I said, Alice didn't really get it, but I was like, oh my God, oh my God, this is where they see the the, the ghost and the lady, are you Alice menstruating right now? I said, your name's Alice too, this is brilliant. And then I looked around and there was literally about 10 other blokes saying pretty much the same thing to their wife or friend. It was just, and I thought... Oh, everyone comes here and says, this is the library from Ghostbusters. Uh, I've got a friend who's in New York right now, and this morning he put a picture of him standing in front of the Ghostbusters place. There we go. So, there we go. The station, fire station. Um, yeah, Christmas, but, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Uh, Die Hard 5 I actually quite like, just very quickly. And I, I put it off for many years and started watching it, and go, this is shit. Watched it one day, thinking it's going to be shit. Kind of enjoyed it, and it's really weird. It's completely not a Die Hard movie, though. I've seen it once. You've got to like take that out of it. It's just a, a, an action film. For me, one, two, and three are great. And three is like not amazing, Three's but it's still fun. good. Yeah, it's you've got fun. Samuel Jackson as a team cop buddy type scenario. Well, the, it works the reason, really well. And the reason it's fun is because originally it was a Lethal Weapon script, That's and then they, why they it, flipped it. You can tell the, the, the dynamic between them is very Riggs that and Murtagh. Could have been a Lethal Weapon movie then. Yeah, why didn't that, they just make it? Because I can't remember what happened there. They, I don't. I think they thought they weren't going to make any more and, lethal and, weapons. Are they still making a new one though? Apparently, 
apparently. They better hurry up. Well, we've got Beverly Hills Cop next year. Oh, it looks good. Did you see the trailer? Yeah, it looks right. The chemistry looks great still between them and fucking... Um, I'm not, I'm not an expecting anything amazing I'm going, uh, because I keep getting disappointed by the India Jones or whatnot, you know. Yeah. yeah totally. Anyway, should we uh, get into Christmas and stuff or whatever? Yeah, well, before we um, get into so what we're going to do next, guys, we're going to take a break and then we're going to talk about 10 years of podcasting. Um, so for anybody who hasn't been with us from the beginning, we're going to talk about some of our favourite episodes, moments, memories. We're going to talk about the highs and the lows. We're also going to talk about our lives and how they've kind of changed in 10 years because a lot happens in 10 years. It's not, you know, it's a long time. It's a decade. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is a bit of a bar humbug, um, which is... I took my children out. We're recording this just after Christmas Day, and I took my children out to a restaurant on Christmas Day, which I've never ever been out. I've been to a pub once for a beer on Christmas Day, but I've never eaten food out in a, uh, a restaurant on Christmas Day. But because we've got two two-year-olds and it's all very hectic, we just decided let's bite the bullet this year. Let's do it. So we went out. We booked in. Got there at, um, about twelve o'clock. Had three courses each. The kids really enjoyed it. You know, Daddy, it's Christmas. They keep shouting. They love their custard and their pudding. We had a great time. The last sort of 10 minutes of it, they were so full of sugar and they were running up and down, waving at all the old people in there. And oh, it was lovely. And um, it just, we just had, we just came away with a really good feeling. So my wife logged in to TripAdvisor the following day uh, to leave them a lovely review. However, before she could leave a review, Somebody had put in a review, which was essentially complaining about me and my family. They said um, their Christmas experience was ruined by a couple of screeching children, not laughing or giggling or saying Merry Christmas and waving, screeching children. Uh, And they said we were there with our grandmother who'd lost her husband only a few months before. And it was going to be her first Christmas without him. And because of these children... Our experience was ruined. But the food was nice and the parking was okay, they put at the end. But I don't know what to say. I mean, me and Gav talked about this off air and people are always going to say things about your kids and you're going to get offended. But maybe if if your grandma's grieving a little bit, just don't take her out to a restaurant full of people who are going to be a bit merry and bright. Because it was full of drunk blokes stood at the bar singing um, the Pogues, Fairy Tale of New York. They didn't complain about them. No, of course. I, I don't know. It's kind okay, of like the cinema. I understand when people don't want kids to cinema, so that's why you do actually have 18 over cinema for movies which aren't 18, even if they're 15, so little, so younger kids can't go in. So maybe like if you're doing that, find a restaurant which is like going like, we're not taking kids. I don't know what restaurant would do that because they'd get fucking social media out. But also, this wasn't a know. fancy restaurant. It was uh, like a, a bar and sizzle grill, which is like a chain of really like in the UK. Day, we, yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, we had the works, <clears throat> but um, they. It's not like a f- fancy restaurant. It's just like a pub that also serves food. We wanted to keep it cheap and cheerful. Still costs us 150 quid for the four of us, but I don't know, man. Some people, you know, I get if you're dealing with grief. I get you might sort of say stuff, but. I just thought I look back now and I laugh a few days later, but at the time I was quite cross and quite upset. But now I just think, well, if you can't enjoy, if you can't see a couple of two year olds enjoying their Christmas day, then I, I feel a bit sorry for you really at the end of the day. But yeah. I just thought I'd mention that because it's quite funny. And now I, 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 used, I used to always have it when I was out, there'd always be someone because my, my three are fucking out of control at times. When <laughs> Feral younger, children. Just fucking like, I've got no chance. And you know, and I've had it before. People tell me, "Can you control your children?" And just the looks that people give, and it's like, F- "Fuck off!" Like, yeah. I know it sounds shit. Yeah. Uh, not me saying "fuck off" there. I don't give a fuck about that. I mean, for those guys, I know it feel like they're screaming. That's annoying, but it's fuck. We all live on the same planet. I can't fucking yeah, help let's, it. I can't let's be do nothing kind. About it. I think, let, let, listen, guys, before we take a break, let's leave that there. Let's say, let's be kind. And remember, at Christmas, just try and be even a little bit more kinder. Really, um, yeah, we all got to live off. here together. Yeah, if not, then fuck off. take your granny Joke somewhere on. else if she's a bit sad. <laughs> anyway, look, let's take a break and then we'll go down memory lane and talk about 10 years of fucking podcasting. Boop, 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 boop. What was that? Uh, it was a Halloween theme for free. Halloween free. Boop, 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 don't know. All right, back in a minute. Ho, ho, ho. We're back again. We're back. We're back. So, Gav. 
again happy anniversary 10 years crazy 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 um i thought what we could do it'd be fun now to talk and get real and talk about podcasting but also like 10 years 10 years is a long time mm. we've been friends a lot longer than that but mm. um yeah crazy times we, we've both been through ups and downs and we've also reviewed some shit films and some great films so let's let's jump in jump into the mix really and talk about it um how, where do you want to start off? Do you, do you want to talk about episodes? Do you want to talk about life? What do you want to do? Oh, I don't know. You lead it. All right, I'll lead it. Um, okay, well, ten years. Ten years ago, um, both very different. We, oh, we recorded our first episode, and then um, what, what, didn't what we press didn't record. No, we, yeah. Not to do it again. <laughs> we did too drunk. <laughs> um, I I wasn't a married man ten years ago either. Obviously, I am now. I'm still with Alice, but um, I also become a dad in that time as well. And um, I was a married man. You were a married man, so we've switched roles. Yeah, well, um, technically, still kind of am, but yeah, yeah not really. But yeah, separate, separated from yeah, your well, ex well, now. Well, yeah. Um, but you've got the lovely Sarah now in your life, which Indeed. is awesome. Yes. Um, fantastic! I'm so happy for you. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> she, oh, she just go. Uh, she don't do Merry Christmas. Fuck up. Um, uh, yeah, I've got some kids now as well, which is crazy. Your kids are grown up, man, because. <laughs> 16 year old now a 14 year old and a nine year old 10 this year i mean you only had two children when we started podcasting yeah which is nuts and the oldest was six at the time oh shit yeah can you i mean this is what i'm saying like 10 years is it to be fair it won't be that long till they're 17 so it's just like what the fuck that's absolutely nuts Mm. Um, and we've taken a few hiatuses here and there, you know. No, that's good then, because that's only a year now. Kick them out the door, 18. Off you go. Get, get out. Fuck off. <laughs> I want to see that. I want to see you actually do that. I don't think I'm going to do that to my autistic child. <laughs> yeah, please don't. <laughs> I don't think that go well. Um, we've taken a few hiatuses here and there. Um, because life throws you curveballs, like we said, Gav separated from his ex, but you know, for the best, really. And you find Sarah now, and you know, I I had some stuff I dealt with as well. I lost my mum and got married six days later, which is a bit of a roller coaster for me, really. Yeah, that and, was insane. And that was a, yeah. <clears throat> that was the last time I was proper drunk. Yeah, um, we we got married six days later, and then we we celebrated being married for a few months, and then the fucking world shut down for the pandemic. Um, it so. Just- Weird. My brain, my brain lost it at that point. Didn't we podcast quite a lot in pandemic because we were in the house going? Should we podcast? <laughs> probably, uh, probably think... two episodes a month. I'd yeah, say we were two doing. Two squeezed into three quite probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we were doing a lot. I think everybody was doing a lot more content, weren't they, during the pandemic? There's, there's a little, there's some parts of the pandemic I kind of liked. I've got, I'm not going to lie. There's parts when I was up in my little loft because I was asleep. I had a little room in the loft. And I was just making a little miniature house out of foam. Because <laughs> I've got uh, nothing to do. And that's why 10 years, I the last few years, it. has probably felt quicker. Because three years of that, a good two of those was the pandemic, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, 20, then, and, 20 to 22. And then after that, the first bouts of years are coming back. Obviously, we're only 2023 going into 2024 soon. It sped along. But all of a sudden now, I feel like it's kind of slowed again i don't know why if anyone else but i feel like it's slowed down again but when yeah. we came out of it it was just like go go it's, ah, and it's boom, go 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 it's a weird weird fucking time it's been crazy um yeah i'm a dad now which i'm still wrapping my head around it still feels very new to me but also i feel like they've always been here you know yeah it's funny because you keep obviously saying bits and bobs it's just stuff like um <clears throat> you you you're learning and as you're because you grow with your kids because you're growing as a, every day you're a parent for the first time of that kid of that age yeah so you're always learning stuff and it's funny because you're always commenting on stuff and it's not funny because i was there 10 years ago doing all this shit or no longer than that you know yeah. so it's funny seeing hearing it from you now and now i'm seeing friends start having children and they're asking me advice and i never give out advice and if somebody asks me something i'll tell them like how i dealt with it or something but you know everybody's journey is different as a parent well how funny it is for me now as i'm completely like thrown from it now if it, i could pro i could change nappy no problem because because it comes on mess memory uh you know muscle memory sort of thing um so i could do that but there's other stuff i'm like oh, i can't remember it's so long ago now being well, a dad well no, the thing is even for me 
it's gone, you know. Even for me, with two two and a half year olds, I don't remember those first few months because you're so yeah. tired. It's such a blur. Like my brother has recently become a dad, um, his first child, and he, whenever he hands me his baby, I'm like, how do I hold it again? He's like, you've got oh, two. I'm I've like, got, yeah, got, but I've, I don't. No, I don't know. I've got that, uh, that stuff. I could do really well, but there's some stuff I'm like. Oh, don't get me wrong. I can hold a baby. I'm not going to drop it. But also, you kind of like you forget that you had to do all this stuff. You know, right? right. You, you think, how did we get through all this? Uh, yeah, no, I had a baby uh, last year. I think it was last year or two years ago. I was you a had baby. a baby last year. Held, held a baby. Oh, right. Thank you. And it was funny holding a baby again. But I was to the point where rock, straight away, and they were kind of comforted. But it was like, yeah, fucking old hand at this. <laughs> No worries. Yeah, I do like holding my brother's baby because what's great is he just kind of lies there and then I look at him and then he doesn't really do a lot. He doesn't give me any back talk or ask for a biscuit and then I can just hand him back to my brother and say, he's done a shit. You yeah. need to change him, not me. Um, but yeah, that, so that happened as well. Um, lots of stuff really. And also we, you know, dead bolt films, we've done a lot in the last 10 years, you know, um, Slightly outside of the 10 years, we made Shadow of Death, which, Gav, has so just never... hit. Just hit Vipco, hasn't it? Uh, hit, on, well, um, well, it's, Prime. It, it's, it's hit. Uh, it's on Amazon now for Rent and Buy, um, which is fucking uh, kind of an achievement. I was actually, for the first time ever, I looked at the uh, Amazon Prime and had that up there, the whole thing, rating, and the characters in the background. And I was proud of yeah. myself. For the first time ever, I was proud of myself. I looked at it last night, and that's the trailer oh, place while film. you're reading it. You're like, wow. Mm-hmm. And it seemed myself in that trailer, you know, and I was thinking, this is weird that Prime that I... Although, Preternatural, uh, another of Used our features, on is it not on Prime anymore? No, uh, it's actually uh, free on YouTube uh, via the actual company, uh, or oh, Plex. Okay, or, cool, I, cool. I, I Actually, no, I think you could probably still rent it on Amazon, but I'm just giving you the cheat codes. We've done a ton of shorts as well. Um, most recently, of course, Star Wars Sanctuary Moon, which we're very proud of. Um, it, <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> um, Star Wars Sanctuary Moon, which we're very proud of. Um, it was a, an amazing experience recording, uh, filming that, and mm. and getting to to be part of that. Sadly, it wouldn't be we'd be remiss to not mention our buddy Boz, mm. who we lost shortly after that, and he. Sadly, never got to see it. But yeah, fellow podcaster. Yeah, some some, some of you see. guys, some of you guys will know Boz um, yeah. from his show, uh, The Little Pod of Horrors. So that's a sad moment. But um, yeah, no, gutted he never see the Star Wars film. So gutted for that reason. I t- you know, just I don't know. I know. Yeah. So I know, but but it's one of those things. And but yeah, did really well with Dead Bolt films over the years. It was just this little. I just literally called it Dead Bolt because Peter Jackson had wing nut. nut I remember. Bolt. I remember the conversation with you, and you said that, and I said, "Well, I like that. That's fine." Oh, okay, um, cool. Yeah, I remember sitting in your living room with you while we were working on this, our second, our well, your second and my first script, because um, we banged out a few scripts in the early days. Mm. Um, yeah, it's been it's been very productive year, you know, uh, ten years, not year, you know, to the point that we've done a hundred and almost fifty episodes. Probably have done a hundred and fifty if you count all the little bonus snippets and fright fests and all the little bits we've done as well. Done a few fright fests as well over the years. Um, well, I thought what would be fun to do. I've even is, I've even interviewed like I interviewed Richard Brake one yeah. of the fright fest ones. Actual legit people. <laughs> Do you remember when we, we kept messaging Tom Holland for a while of um, Psycho yeah. fame? Well, Charles Play yeah, yeah. fame, yeah. And his was it his assistant kept saying, yeah, 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 we just need a date. We just need a date. But he we kept never going got... back and forth. No, um, yeah, he sent me a, a few years ago. Happy Merry Christmas to me. I was like, oh, Christmas Day. And that was about it. It's just... Um, he, I never... think he wanted to do it, but then it's trying to get through to whoever's organising it. And it was just like, a, I can't... Can't we just sort it out? And yeah, it didn't work. So yeah, yeah. we don't really have people on the show often, very really. Yeah, we've had a few <clears> guests <throat> in the ten years. Um, some fellow podcasters like Kate and some of our friends like Andy and John. Um, yeah, early years. Yeah, we're just fucking now. Just put the microphone in a room and we all sit in a room. It's ridiculous. So so bad. <laughs> it is difficult just to sometimes organise our own lives around getting a a show recorded though which is why sometimes there are delays yeah. but we appreciate that you guys still support and listen you know but um 
I mean, if anybody wants to know the way that we work is <clears throat> I'll come up with the the theme of the episode, really. I'll check with Gav that he's happy with that. And, you know, Gav always gives me, oh, I want to cover this film. So I put it on the list and I, I usually try and pair up a couple of similar films. <clears throat> the way it works is we plan a date. Um, that we're going to record and then about a week before that date we'll both watch the films make make the notes for that film and then i'll take an evening to write all the extra segments like notes for the intro and outro i'll do my re- research for world of the strange if we're doing a time team segment which we used to do on every episode i also need to do <clears throat> a ton of research on that and we put it all together and then we on that night we get together we we press record and we just go for it take those breaks like i say and we actually record it linearly as well so we record the outro we record you know occasionally that we have to break it up perhaps but um we try and record it in the order that we're going to put it out there so that the editing from gav's side is much much easier all he needs to do is chuck the music in and snip a few bits here and there i just generally need to chop the nose and tails heads and tails yeah and then um and then we will I'll write. I'll write up a little piece that Gav will then attach to it, and it goes up online for everybody to. Yeah, I have to uh, uh, obviously uh, pull the uh, trailers and the audio for that. Oh uh, yeah, that I is have a to put, uh, I have to like put all the sound to fit uh, the length of our talks conversations. But actually, I've got it down to a T now, where uh, it's not too much work on my end. Actually, and I can have it edited within the hour. <clears throat> and, and we've uh, said it. A- We've said it a billion times, but we'll say it again. We we both love doing this. We do this even if no one else is listening. We've got patrons, but we do it do it even if we didn't, um, because it is a little bit of therapy for both of us. We get we're friends, obviously. We get together, we shoot the shit, we catch up. We always catch up a bit before we hit record, but we we do a lot of our catching up while we're recording as well. We we save funny stories and anecdotes for while we're recording because we love seeing each other's reactions to these things, you know and we we love doing that and um i'm just really thankful that we we met we created this in a hotel room in wales one night which is a bit weird but we did right. we uh we were working together away and um talked about something yeah we let we led in our single beds next to each other chatting and you said we should be recording this and then we started we just said decided that we would yeah and fam- famously didn't hit record on that first ever session um, but let's talk about what, what films that we've covered and just to jog some of our memories and get a little bit of a discussion going around some of our favourite things and some of our not-so-favourite things. I can't wait to talk to you about some of that. So, Gab, I thought I'd start off with just reminding you some of the movies we've covered because we have a birthday episode each every year um, where the, the birthday boy gets to pick the movie. So, Gav, some of the ones that you've picked over the years, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow from 1981. You were really excited for us to cover that. I don't know why, though. <laughs> I can't Weird. remember it really. <laughs> um, you made us watch the Burbs, which I will watch any time. Um, I didn't make you watch the Burbs. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, we love it. We love it. The, the Lost Boys, Fright Night. This is my pro- choices. Yeah, these are your choices. Yeah. Lost Boys and Fright Night's birthday. Okay. Yeah. You also picked uh, for your Tarantino birthday. You picked the. Th- um, sorry, not Tarantino, but Snowy. You picked the Thing and the Hateful Eight. Great combo. Did we do the Thing and the Hateful Eight together? Yeah. What year was that? Uh, it was our third year of podcasting. See, that's the thing, though. If you go back now, the audio is probably not like good. We almost need to fucking do like fresh reviews of these things. Mm. You know, the following year you picked um, Silver Bullet and the Howling. Okay. I guess if we ever get to a point where we're just like, <laughs> what, what, what we could cover, we could do that, but that's not going to happen, I suppose. Uh, Silver Bullet and the Howling. I didn't want to pick the Howling. You would have must have put that in there because I'm not. Uh, Howling's all right. No, no, you would have picked it. This, I know, I never, that's, I always let let you pick your kind birthday of weird, episode because I'm like, how it's that's all right. So strange that I'd yeah. pick that rather than America or London. Well, we covered that separately. I think. Yeah, I know we did. Yeah, did a commentary. Um, you also the following year you picked uh, for to support and to sort of discuss mental health. You picked First Blood and Session Nine. Yeah, that was one. Of that my was a heavy episodes. Episode. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, my favourite birthday episode was the following year where you picked The Deadpool and Ten to Midnight because, my God, I had such fun with those two. It's for jacking off. So much fun. If for anybody who hasn't seen Ten to Midnight with Charles Bronson from 1983, get and watch it. It is good. Um, and The Deadpool, definitely 
definitely my favourite of the Dirty Harry films, I've got to say. It's my favourite of them. And it gets this though. And it's like, I, th- I don't think you guys are looking at it properly. Yeah. There's, some, there's a funness to it, which is not in the other films. It is a different movie from the others. Uh, and the following year, you got very British with us. You, we did What a Carve Up with the Carry On <laughs> team. And you pair that up with The House in Nightmare Park. Nice, no, Frankie Howard. I, de- I definitely picked them. That episode with those two films has got you written all over it. Your cheeky yeah. sense of humour. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then last year, we did The Relic and The Horror Express. Horror on a Train. Fuck, yes. Oh, no, not Horror on a Train, but Creatures sort of. I, you could see as the years have gone, I've got more like, oh, and I slowly thought about it and picked up good pairings, you know. Yeah, definitely. Well, I love it. Um, and obviously, our next episode will be, well, our, not our next, but the one after will be your birthday. And you picked Sorcerer, William Friedkin, and Studio 666. So we'll be covering that in a couple of months. Yeah, and Studio 666 is still a strange <clears throat> one for it, but I wanted just like fun. Because <clears throat> it's quite modern compared to Sorcerer, which is not. Yeah, but I think when it's your birthday episode, you can go crazy. I just want like <clears> fun <throat> to go with that film. So that moves on to me then. So my first birthday episode, I picked Alligator and Brain Dead. Wow, Brain Dead. I, I can't even remember doing talking about Brain Dead. I remember talking about Alligator because I uh, pronounced the name wrong. And Bo Mesh just to say, <laughs> pronounced it Robert, Robert Forrester. Forrester? Oh, Robert Forster. Forster. We, we pronounced it wrong, remember? But that's all I, but I can remember that. Um, the following year, I picked Psycho. That's Great right. movie. Yep. And I paired that up with, randomly, Jason Six. <laughs> because it's my favourite of the Jason franchise. Obviously, that's put a spanner in the works because we're now currently <clears throat> annually reviewing the Jason movies every summer. But... Um, <laughs> Kill, 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 kill. But yeah, whatever. The following year I did... Uh, oh, this was a good year. One of my favourite birthday episodes. I picked The Fly and The Monster Squad. <laughs> yeah. Great. Great couple of movies. And I remember doing that because I now have The Fly on Blu-ray, randomly. And uh, it's, be- but it's body horror. Yeah, and that's I'm why not, you're a bit apprehensive I'm of that bit, one. I find body horror yuck. I don't like it. Um, and... Uh, but I remember doing that as a review and really enjoying reviewing it because I was looking at it through a reviewer's eyes of the film and it was it came across differently and really more appreciated. More possibly, of an intellectual look at it, I guess. Possibly my favourite Cronenberg, I would say. It's, uh... Yeah, I'm not a big Cronenberg fan because of the body horror, so yeah, it probably would be for me, I suppose. I do like a History of Violence, that's right. The following year I chose two sequels that don't always get a lot of love. Ghostbusters 2 and Psycho 2. Yeah. Psycho 2 is great. Yeah, Tom Holland. Um, yeah, and Ghostbusters 2 is... I love that too, so... It's fine. Um, after that, I got Stephen King the following year. I did Stand By Me and Misery. Stand Some good By re- Me and Misery. Stand By Me and Misery, bastard. Um, I don't think you were much of a fan of the following year when I made you watch Teen Wolf and Labyrinth. It's really weird you keep saying these movies, and I'm just sitting here going, like... Oh, you've got them in town, man. Literally, uh, Daisy's obsessed with Stand By Me. Fucking loves have, it. Have Watches you got a copy of Teen over. Wolf or Labyrinth yep. right there? I don't know. No, I've got a load of girls' films. Oh, good. Bridesmaids and Clueless and stuff. Um, okay. No. Um, after that, I got Arnold in the mix. Uh, I made us review Total Recall and The Running Man. Some sci-fi 80s goodness. Sweet. Uh, and then last year, or, or this year, because we're still in 2023, we did Happy Birthday to Me and April Fool's Day in the flesh. I remember recording those. Sat nose to nose with you. Oh, really? Because we were together. We, did, yeah. we, we <clears throat> did, probably didn't rock two microphones, did we? Still one mic, was it? Um... Is this a Beastie Boys quote? <laughs> when was we this? whacked two mics and we what whacked year was that? together. That was this year. This year we were sitting together. Oh, so yeah, but yeah, of course you were around. It's because we were shooting yeah. the Century Moon, weren't we? That's right. Ah, so we would actually had two mics. So it would have sounded, yeah. pro- or sounded yeah. proper. Yep. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, we also enjoyed our first uh, year of having patrons pick 
movies. Patrons so we've had pick, 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 patron pick. Patron we pick. we got some patron supporters a few years ago, um, and one of them, Matthew Godley, came up with a fantastic idea of letting our patrons pick two films for us to review uh which we've now incorporated into every three episodes as a patron pick mm. uh it's a great way to you know give them something back for for supporting us um, and, and it a, also it's amazing that you all support us i really appreciate it. it's like seriously appreciate it. i know i'm not a very enthusiastic person when i talk sometimes <laughs> that it comes across possibly but i really appreciate it but also we've got to review some absolute crazy stuff that we wouldn't normally do um so we've had hansel and gretel and bram stoker's dracula oh, i've loved being able to do some of these patron films because it's like when would we do this um i, I can't remember, wait next next episodes fucking oh banging. we've got a couple of good ones coming up um rj picked the land that time forgotten warlords of atlantis for us after that we got into some uh um, what do you call it? Uh, hag exploitation from Jamie. She picked whatever happened to Baby Jane in, in Straight Jacket. Yes, that was really interesting. A really good episode. And then after that, we got a Poltergeist and Hereditary thrown at us, which was again covering Poltergeist. I don't know why we just never covered it, but we got to finally do it. Yeah. Um, after that, the Legacy and the Changeling again like the changeling was is just a phenomenal film and i don't know why we've never reviewed it and but. alexi that was that <clears throat> building that i was going to go to and i never fucking got to it it's just like yeah the road. Well, we, you developed a bit of a man crush on um oh, what's his name in that uh you know from from roadhouse he's got a mustache and his, his sculpted butter sam elliott sam elliott yeah he's quite, you, you, he's quite a handsome fella um, and then I remember Holly after that threw a couple of curveballs at us with Cell from 2016, the Stephen King scribed movie, and Razorblade Smile. Oh, yeah. Uh, we covered that, which is crazy. It was like a, an early Matrix vampire British thing. That's a weird um, one. And then most recently, Rachel is uh has picked mum and dad and run to Which parents yeah of course uh, yeah it was funny yeah. seeing that i could see between the lines here right <laughs> yeah uh and our next patron pit which will be our next episode is we're, we're, we've circled back around uh so matthew has selected um dead man's shoes and flash gordon <gasps> so so we're, so we're definitely going to keep this going because it's so much fun getting these things thrown at us, guys, and we really appreciate you doing that. So start thinking about your second round. I can't wait to watch, I watched Dead Man's Shoes in ages, and that is a great film. Yeah, it's a dark one. I think we might have to do those Dead Man's Shoes first and then finish up with Flash Gordon because I think <gasps> he'll save every one of us. Ba, um, ba, 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 ba. Lastly, because Just it's our Christmas, because this is our Christmas episode, I thought I'd remind us and our listeners all of our Christmas shows that we've done in the ten years. Um, so, a very first Christmas episode that we didn't press record for, and we had to record the following evening. We covered Rare Exports, which I talked about earlier, and Jack Frost, the Killer Snowman, which is silly and fun. Um, the following year, we did Killer Santas. We did Santa's Sleigh and Sint, which you watched the other night, didn't you? I think you watched Sint the other night. No, I didn't. I was going to, uh, but I didn't get around to it. After that, we did Black Christmas, the classic. Uh, and we paired it up with William Shatner drinking cocoa in a cardigan in uh, a Christmas horror story, Brooks which I'm cocaine. a big fan of that one. Drinking cocaine, William Shatner drinking cocaine. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, after that, we got quite modern with a, um, Better Watch Out, and we covered the classic Die Hard. So that was a really good Christmas episode. Yeah. Um, after that, we did Krampus and Gremlins. Again, the Christmas keeps on giving, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Then we did that weird movie that you picked to follow the year after that called Secret Santa, about the family that's punch gets spiked and they all start murdering each other oh yeah that was quite enjoyable if i remember rightly um and we paired that up with the classic is it a christmas movie is it not lethal weapon yeah we figured you know what it's our show it's our christmas movie to us what was that first Fuck one it. called yeah. secret santa oh, right, 2018 yeah. yeah i remember when we did calvair that was great 
Yeah, <laughs> well, that, that's that's the last last year. So after that, we did Silent Night, Deadly Night, and Scrooged. Um, then we did Die Hard Two the year after that with the Wolf of Snow Hollow. Um, and then, like you say, last Christmas we did Calvair, the ordeal, which is certainly that, isn't it, Gaff? It is an ordeal. The only movie I've seen Sarah look away disgusted. Oh, and I've watched some films with Sarah. Yeah. Uh, for anyone who hasn't seen it, 2004, great but dark but I film. I really like the movie, and I have it in my DVD collection. So. And we paired that up with another equally dark um, Belgian film or French film called The Advent Calendar, which I talked about earlier, from 2021. Yeah. So, you know, we've done that. We've done um, New Year's. We, we went for a run of doing New Year's-themed movies, but there aren't an awful lot of them. The only other time we really try is Valentine's. We try and do stuff that's got slight romance or, or sexy or love. But we've also got Easter specials, don't we, Gav, which have been the bane of your fucking life because we started off with alien that was fine I and, well, crit- well, and critters well, i like alien aliens and prometheus <laughs> the rest i don't really care about <clears throat> so every year we watched then after one, of that, the, oh. one of the alien franchise all the way through to covenant um which isn't too bad yeah but we then did Alien vs. Predator as well. I mean, that's okay. Like That's fairly all right entertainment. AVP 2, did we do that? Or did we not bother? No, we didn't bother with that one. I Come on, we've got, we got to draw the lines. I love the fact we won't know. Uh, but then, it, then it's the critters. Oh, well, God. we did because critters come out of eggs. We thought, well, let's let's do the critters movies. Critters one. Yeah, uh, uh, right. we got we got uh, we got that review we, from someone. We got a bad review because I think for critters three, they just didn't like me. Well. You just couldn't find anything positive to say about Critters 3. And, f- and as for Critters 4, it isn't any better, really. It's just awful. I think when I started a Critters 2 off of Shitters 2, however, they don't like me saying that. And it's like, I'll get nothing from this. I can't help it. However, after that, because we'd run out of egg-themed horror films and Easter-themed horror films, I said, I've got an idea. St. Patrick's Day usually falls around <laughs> spring slash Easter. We're still Let- doing that, though. Let's do the Leprechaun film. No, oh. we finished them now. Oh, thank God. Um, so we started off with the Leprechaun. Or oh, thank Satan. Oh, thank Satan. Uh, and then we did Leprechaun yeah. 2 and 3, which I could tell when we got that to that point, you were already done. Then we got to Leprechaun 4 in space, 5 in the hood, 6 back to the hood. And we found some fun stuff to talk about. No, I remember uh, the second one of the... the <clears throat> uh, in the hood ones yeah I mean, was that like actually not like the some stuff production value was okay something i'm pretty sure I had yeah some, it was pretty good I'm production pretty sure i was kind of surprised by it i think it's because the one before it the production was so low they spent all their budget on iced tea being in it do you remember yeah so, the second one was actually just a little bit better i think i i, I think you know i remember now fucking hell i remember well it was only the this budgets, year we recorded it <laughs> that's why the budgets were the same but it was just different people make it, different director, production, whatever. So one of them's more talented than the other. Sorry, it's the way it is. Now, my question to you is, I already know that your least favourite films we've covered are going to be in one of those two franchises, but which franchise to you is the worst one? Critters, which is only four films, or Leprechaun, which is six, not including the two recent sort of reboots? Oh, my God. God. Which which we're not going to cover, by the way. What one's worse? Yeah, which is worse? A pro- a probably the critters, because at least with the leprechauns, it, it's Warwick Davis as well. He continues throughout the films. Slight theme. Uh, it's quite funny because Warwick Davis as well. I'm going to go yeah. with that even as more. I, 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 I don't know. If you said, like, right, that's it. You're sitting in this room. You're going to watch the critters movies back-to-back looped or the six Warwick. Oh, I was probably going to six, I suppose, because there's more of them. I don't know. If you could smoke weed and watch the Leprechaun movies and have a bong every time Warwick Davis has a bong, might then make, that, that might make it better. Yeah. Well, I thought I'd ask that one because you know I know that I've put you through I put you through a lot over the ten years, Gav. I'm really sorry. Um, I've made you watch some of those films, but I think ninety percent of what we've watched <laughs> and reviewed has been fun. It's not often that we come out of a film both sort of going, uh, well, "That was shit." Eight, eight, eighty-five. Eighty-five. <laughs> There's been some movies I've been like. Oh. I think the good thing about 
our conversations though is we always find something funny or silly and go on what are you gonna say uh the the difference between you and i i will sit there and fucking go no and get moody and not moody i just have more of a and it's not a negative opinion because i'm a happy but like person but i will really fucking give it to a movie where i don't feel like it's where you'll be a lot more upbeat about it and uh that probably makes it better listening rather than us both being exactly the same page because that'd be boring it would be boring unless it's, we... a, unless it's a justified good film yeah, you know, when we're, re- when we're reviewing like Die Hard yeah, or like, something, yeah, of course, yeah, we're, amazing. We're but then re- people are tuning in knowing that they're going to hear two people <sighs> I'm so sorry. really loving Bi- Die Hard. I was going to say Buy Hard then. I don't know what that is. Bite Hard. Ooh. Hello. Um, but I think what makes it is our silly tangents and stupid voices and jokes over the years. So long may it continue. And mm. it's been an incredible journey. And, and we're just about to hit, you know... It's, I just don't know what else to say, really. It's just incredible. So, Shall we 20... get, get on to the episode? Yeah, 2024, here, here we come. Hmm. I was going to say, here ye. Here I thought ye. you could say, here we come. <laughs> uh... Well, thank you for sticking with us, everyone, for 10 years. But now we're going to review our one and only Christmas film for this Christmas episode, yeah. which is the National Lampoon's Christmas vacation. After vacationing across America and throughout Europe, this holiday season, the Griswolds are going to play it safe. Clark, we're stuck under a truck. Oops. They're staying at home. I give you the Griswold family Christmas tree. Hope you're not getting sap all over your sweater, Clark. All Clark wants is a quiet, old-fashioned Christmas. Sorry. Got a little knot here. You can work on that. What he's going to get is the gift that keeps on living. Merry Christmas. His family. We didn't come to impose. (laughs) Oh, hell, there's plenty of room. Do you sleep with your brother? Do you know how sick and twisted that is, Mom? Well, I'm sleeping with your father. Have you got a kiss for me? <laughs> eh, you better take a rain check on that, Art. He's got a lip fungus they ain't identified yet. But no holiday could ever be more deeply touching. We were gonna call, but Eddie wanted to make it a surprise. If I woke up tomorrow with my head sewn to the carpet, I wouldn't be more surprised than I am right now. <laughs> ah, I'm really gonna fly down the hill with this stuff. So genuinely moving. Can I refill your eggnog for you? Drive you out to the middle of nowhere, leave you for dead. More truly uplifting. Can I show you something? I was just blouse browsing. Or more down to earth. Merry Christmas! If Santa is smart, he'll stay well clear of this joint. It's a death trap. What? <laughs> then Christmas with the Griswolds. Everybody come out quick, look at the lights! They want you to say grace. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. This year, let Chevy Chase light up your holidays. <laughs> National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That thing had nine lives. She just spent them all. <laughs> you woo, crack up. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation from 1989, rated 12, an hour and 37 minutes. The Griswold family's plan for a big family Christmas predictably turn into a big disaster. But don't worry, guys, we're not going to do that <laughs> regularly. But, Let's um, do our review like that. But we just figured... Because there's only there's one movie. Like that. Here we go. I'll start. Angelo, you do one word from your notes. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. What What crazy people is going to decipher, decipher that review? I figured it out. The biggest brain in the world deciphered their review of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. This is ri- written by John Hughes, who is very good at writing Christmas films. Um, and weirdly... Directed by Jeremiah S. Chechik, who did a lot of music videos and does a lot of TV now. He's only ever done a handful of films. You wouldn't know any of them other than this one and The Avengers. 
Now, I'm not talking about Marvel's Avengers. I'm talking about that god-awful film with Sean Connery, Uma Thurman, Ray Fiennes. Based Ray on Fiennes. the British TV show. Yeah. Awful film, but in a cheesy kind of way. So, what a strange career. But uh, Yeah, well... Um... It, it it differs really because this this product would have been uh one of some strong willed minded people and chevy chase being one of them uh being a supposedly kind of hard to work with um christopher columbus being kind of put off by wanting to work with chevy chase and declining mm-hmm. and john hughes saying i can't do it i'm still wrapping up post on uh, uncle buck um but you can imagine, like, sometimes you don't actually have to direct. You could. There's going to be films out there which you, like, guaranteed, behind the scenes, the director was kind of just like, uh, and the director of photography, the, the p- producer, the, like, so many people are quite strong people, would have, could would and could have, not necessarily just because they're strong people, it might just have happened, because the director, whatever reasons happen, can make the film without the director. You can have everybody in place knowing what they do, and just the film evolves and made itself, and guaranteed there's movies out there which you love, which that happened. So, <clears throat> even though the director didn't have that much of a uh, CV as such, I don't think that's so much of an issue to make this film. But saying that, it's a well-handed film. Yeah, and I think the cast really drive it because it is an ensemble piece although it's chevy chase there's a lot of cast members that all play their part you know randy quaid etc and without all of those cast members all the children all the old relatives everybody the neighbors it, that's what makes this film and i can't um, it didn't probably do incredibly when it came out but it's one of those films that, that it's a cult classic it's it something, needed it's like it ha- needed the original to be, halloween yeah it needed to take a long time before people started appreciating it i think really the two strong <clears throat> people in it really would have been john hughes and chevy chase those two even yeah. though john hughes and chevy chase producing just because they are they're going to be saying no this is what we're doing that's what we're doing this is what we're doing john hughes is quite a visually director he's, uh, he's a director that knows a uh, quentin tarantino they know a uh, christopher nolan they know where they're going to go what the movie looks like in their mind already they've pretty much produced it and done that so when he comes up with the idea of going to angelo badalamenti twin peaks david lynch's composer and saying can you score this film which he did he's doing that in a way he wants to, this film to be coming at it on a darker side and not as normal because he knows Angelo Badalamenti he's never composed something like this and um, it, it's just giving it a whole different thing but he's the one saying that John Hughes is going in as a producer saying that the director isn't yeah yeah so totally. the director's more of a director for hire I think for this particular project yeah and that does happen like you say from time to time yeah. where it's it's more about the the clout behind where where it happens mainly is in TV Mm. that's why you have a director come on to a couple episodes you might see a slight signature but they don't have time it's move on shoot move shoot move we just need a director who's available at the time when did you first come across this film is this a childhood one or <clears throat> i have no idea i think the childhood i do remember i think a lot more the uh, uh other lampoons yeah the european, european i think european mainly being english and known london and it isn't this is you know pre-internet so like it felt more homely to me i guess um yeah i don't know this but then one day my buddy he's like oh no we watched national Boot cruise vocation it's like christmas day or christmas eve christmas eve and he goes no we were every year and i sat over and watched it with him on christmas eve and it was kind of fun to do that with his family and then we kind of i did it again then i kind of just took that tradition on and this year is the only year I didn't because I didn't get time to do it for, and I wanted to do it a bit more fresher for the show. And I was luckily, because I went to CX yesterday when I was buying some bits of bobs, I found it on uh, Blu ray and picked it up. And it was really nice to see it in such high definition. So that's it. That's the history for me. How about yourself? Um, I think I don't really remember seeing it as a kid. It was, certainly wasn't on rotation when we were kids. It wasn't something we'd watch every year, but we had seen it. But I think it felt like a bit more of an adult film so i didn't really get it so much it wasn't really until i really i mean I, I, if i'm honest with you the first time i really properly fell in love with it was was watching it with you probably a good 10 11 12 years ago oh, at your really? house and i remember thinking god this is so good and, and i think probably because of the moment we were both sat there really laughing we at were it probably drinking <clears throat> egg mog uh, egg mog what the fuck is that <laughs> don't do that everybody warning <laughs> don't drink egg mog 
Oh. Uh, we were probably egg drinking. Nog. And because I used of, to have one of the gla- moose glasses as well. We were probably full of cheese and, and you know, and crisps. Um, but Wait, I think. Is that, that, is that our podcast in style? Full of cheese. cheese. And but I think. Like our jokes. I think that was when I started to really fall in love with it. And then I've watched it every year, I think, for the last 10 or more years. And in fact, the last couple of years, it's moved into my top five Christmas films of all time. And this year, I'm talking to my dad because he said, I'll do a watch along with you. And I said, oh, I, I can't because I've got to make notes. But I said, look, tell me when you, if you want, we'll press play at the same time. And then we can have a phone call afterwards. So we did. Um, and I said to him, God, do you know what, Dad? I didn't realise just how much I relate to Clark Griswold. But my God, I don't know if I've ever related to a character more in a film or definitely in a Christmas film as a guy who's such an optimistic man who's trying to bring everyone together and tries to see the good and positive and everything, which I do in real life as much as I can. And sometimes the world's just against this guy and you just feel so bad for him. But also, it's so fucking hilarious and it's so John Hughes. You know, it's got that planes, trains and automobiles style, great outdoors, those movies where you shouldn't really be laughing at this guy and his family falling apart, but you kind of are because it's just so stupid. So, yeah, I think you're one of the reasons I, I fell back in love with it and really realised how great this film is, really. And it it's just a film about a man and his family, but the scenes, it's each individual scene, everybody's got a favourite, you know, it's like a series of sketches almost, isn't it? Mm. You know, the opening scene, the middle scene, this bit, that bit, you know, and then just throw in all these cast members, and as soon as Randy Quaid shows up, my God, it just kicks it into overdrive, because he's just a ridiculous character that you kind of love to hate, really, or hate to love, whichever one. Um, but yeah, it's just awesome. Awesome. Randy Quaid, <clears throat> um, John Hughes, uh, the the second film that he wrote of the National Lampoons, didn't do so well in the box office, and it didn't involve Cousin Eddie. And he felt like uh, this film had to have Cousin Eddie to make it more uh, uh, make it more uh, uh, acceptable in the box office, and you know get the money back again, sort of thing. And he thought only Randy Quaid can do it as well. So um, that happened. I wonder what he thought, thought of Part Two if he was still alive, John Hughes, when Part Two came out, because so- uh, he would not have liked that. It's called uh, Island Vacation. C- C- Cousin Eddie's Island Vacation. Yeah, what happens? I don't. The only reason I watched it is because Bo Ransell did did it for his Christmas special a couple of years ago. Pick six movies, they shot one of his shows, yeah. and and him and his buddy um, covered it, and they were ripping it to shreds. And I thought, mm, I've got to see. It. I think it was on Prime for free to watch. So I thought, I've got to see this and see if it's as bad. And to be honest with you, Bo is sometimes the reason I watch some of these terrible films because his show they rip things apart so much that it makes me I'm such a you know I've got such a bad streak I need to go you know what I'm like with shark movies etc so I had to go and watch it and it was just terrible I don't remember much about it to be honest I think they try and do a lot of callbacks and jokes and lines from from this one but it just falls so flat you know Chevy Chase isn't in it it's not even that very Christmassy. It, it all takes place on a tropical island. I think he wins a trip away or something. It's just terrible, Gav. Like, Randy Quaid is a funny guy, but he's not a leading man. He can't carry a film. That, that movie I watched, uh, very, sorry, uh, to that Bug Buster movie I watched, whatever it's called. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Did I talk about it in the last episode? Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, Randy Quaid, I, I kind of don't mind him. Did he go a bit? Hasn't he gone a bit? Off, off. Him and his wife. Um, a bit weird li- in the world. In, the, they in wear, his head. I think they live in like basically wear tin foil hats and think the government. He basically is turned into <coughs> his character. One of his characters. Independence, Independence Day. Day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he he's phenomenal in this. Um, and I, I, I has some of the best lines. But Clark is my favourite character. Yeah. Or, or Sparky, as his wife likes to call him. Yeah. Um, she doesn't look like her anymore. No, she looks very different. Looks like a totally different person from all the plastic surgery she's had. Yeah, Beverly D'Angelo. Because um, she was in Violent Night, wasn't she? And I didn't know it was her until yeah. it was halfway through, and I'd been watching her. For If you'd have said to me, uh, who's that woman? I'd be like, I, I have no idea. I've never seen it before. 
I, no. I probably would have noticed her voice eventually, maybe. But <clears throat> weird. We also got just um, grow old gracefully. Juliette Lewis in this as well. A young Juliette Lewis, mm. and then uh, one of the dudes from that uh, popular program. Uh, it's all about space theory or something. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. What's it called? <clears throat> oh, you mean that God Big damn, Bang Theory? Fucking hate that show. Uh, he's he's in that, isn't he? <clears throat> he is. Fucking hell, you're right. I forgot about that. Yeah. I, I, it's because I've really I try and avoid that show. I really get great on me. That show does. Oh, oh, that's that show. I, I, I'm funny enough. I'm about to say it's a Marmite show, but I'm not because I'm like. I don't really have any opinion of it, to be honest with you. I understand why it has a following. Yeah, I do as well. But I think what annoys me is I don't find it very funny yeah. and I don't and I don't like it. And everybody tells me, oh, Dan, you must like the Big Bang Theory. I'm like, no, I don't. And they're like, what? Why would they like think that? Because, because, uh, because, because I wear like shirts genre with films. Marvel catches on. Yeah, what, exactly. What? And, and okay. I like some science fiction. But I'm not like these guys. No. no. I'm not socially inept. <laughs> I hope. Um, well, let's get into this film. <clears throat> we're going to talk about this film, and you know, we're going to. So, if you've still, it is still Christmassy for you. You're probably back at work or something. But if it isn't, see if you can <laughs> have a little hot cho- hot cocoa. I was about to say hot cho cho. What hot cho cho? Sounds have a hot cho cho. <laughs> hot cho cho sounds like something you smoke. And drink some egg milk. I got me a hot cho cho and smoke some uh, hot chocolate. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, like I say, th- this film, basically, this movie is a series of sketches, really, with the plot line being that Clark Griswold is trying to hold it all together. He's got various members of his family, in-laws, aunties, cousins, descending on him, and he's happily taking everyone in over Christmas, all whilst waiting on uh, a bonus check it's to come of, through it, from it, his boss. Well, I actually had this sort of, I was, if, as a reviewer, looking at this in a different type, different than I ever have before and looking at his choices and what's going on and it's as I can figure it out okay I had to work it out through clues in the film this this house was his parents and they gave it to him and moved to a smaller place this is what I've had to come to the conclusion so it helped me this bit okay and he now has a house but he's decided he wants a big family Christmas for the first time with everybody and that's why he's inviting them all over, and they're staying for say, they're staying for like a month, which is ridiculous. Um, well, only Ed, cousin Eddie is. Oh, okay. but they, cousin Eddie yeah, is. But like, they, I'm going to be staying for a month. But those guys do turn up on the 14th, which is just a bit insane. Mm. Um, anyway, so that's how I figured this out because I couldn't. I had to. I've never really figured the movie out, and that's what's going on. And cousin Eddie just happens to hear that this is happening and turns up. And the reason being is when he finds a small packet present that he hid when he was a child in the loft for his mum uh, no no that's a present that he bought his wife I think for Mother's Day oh really but I still think your theory is, is good because he finds all those old videos Film canisters um, and also he's a man who is almost obsessed with tradition Tra- he wants that's a to, traditionist absolutely he wants to keep this dream alive now, now the reason i relate and, to him, I think, and having a big family meal and having everybody there and everything you've just described is actually is my dad my dad is um really loves tradition he loves having a big family thing you know christmas was his big thing and a house turned into santa's grotto if everyone was there, you just see him sat in the corner watching everybody interacting, drinking and eating. It's kind of like a bit sad, really, when we lost mum, because he's kind of taking the wind out of his cells a little bit for Christmas. But up until that point, he he was a bit like Clark, really. He tried everything he could to make sure everyone was there and everyone was fed and everyone was looked after and had yeah. a bed. Um, so I think that's why I relate to Clark, because he's such a sweetheart, really. You know, at yeah. heart, he's a, such a good guy at heart, really. Uh, well, he, well, he. I think also he's probably invited everybody down because he's getting a swimming pool. Oh yeah, and yeah, I, I don't know. I do. It always is one of those things. Sarah also said, "Well, a house in America probably a bit cheaper." But so many movies you have the people with like. 
ridiculously big houses. Just like, home how alone? do you afford? Like, it's just a bit like, yeah, home loans. Like, then how do you afford everybody's flights? It's just a bit like, it. I don't know. It almost. I don't know if it wasn't intentional, but goes almost put people down. Or do you know what I mean? Or it's just like people can't afford such properties. It's a bit well, like. I don't really like that. Sometimes. Well, there is that. Cause and, Clark, and I never thought about that shit. And even I'm middle aged, you know. Clark's plan is on Boxing Day morning to reveal to the ball that he's building a swimming pool. Obviously, that plan. And that's why he's invited everyone down, I yeah. presume. But then at the same time, he wants everyone to know so that he can then fly them over for the summer when the swimming pool's ready and they can have a big family summer thing. So he, he's still doing it from a family point of view. He's always got his, and he loves his kids and he loves his wife and he, they love him. And even when things go wrong or he looks like a buffoon, they still support him and say, dad, you did a good job. You tried your best. We love you, dad. I think the only people he doesn't like actively in this whole movie are his, his yuppie neighbors who seem to hate him as much as he Todd hates and Margo, them. Yeah, they're who, hilarious. Who live in Murdoch's... Murdoch's... Murdoch's uh, house. Murdoch's house, a lethal weapon. Yeah. Um, but other than those two, he... He loves everyone. And he loves Christmas. Murdoch, Murdoch... Fuck it now. Murdoch and Murdoch. Can't fight like fucking a crossover. 80 Imagine lethal that. weapon. Just those two. Well, I mean, if Murtaugh's pissed Murtaugh off with Riggs's behaviour, if yeah. if Murtaugh gets pissed off with Riggs's behaviour, what's he going to be like being paired Murtaugh. up with Murdoch? He'd <laughs> be in a he'd be in a helicopter. It's not just a white. He's not going to be like this fucking white guy. It's not it's just that. It's like this white guy, <laughs> and he's flying a helicopter upside down, and he's like, "Why are we upside down? I'm too old for this shit." Murtaugh and Murdoch. Oh man, Murdoch! What a great character. <clears throat> I want to see that. Should we get into it? Yeah, let's do it. So we start Sitting off in the with car. The, well, we start off with the nice animated credits, which always gets me in the Christmas spirit. Yeah, it's the time of year. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh my god, that song. Please kill me now. I. Oh really? I love that no, song. No, no, no. It's the, please choose a different singer. It's the time of year. <laughs> it's that. Maybe it's you that could song. do it. Oh man. But yeah, you're right. We're in. The, so we start off in a very. Eight, late 80s American family wagon, station wagon. And we're driving along and the family is singing. And again, this gives us straight away, we know who Clark is. He's there. Oh, come oh, he's conducting. us adore you. Uh, what, what is with, with this is you see the, the wife just being like, oh, okay, husband, I will, you know, um, I'll, 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 go, along to, with... I'll go along with it. It's, oh, come on, kids, here we go. And, and it's just so funny, the dynamic. And the mum and dad absolutely adore and love each other, which is quite sweet, and it's quite evident. And uh, the kids do and love the their dad, do, even though they're even teenagers. Though they think they're fucking <clears throat> idiots, like my kids think I am. Um, you know, uh, actually, uh, recently though, my kids think it's quite cool. I've got a movie for rent and buy on Prime. Shadow of Death, Amazon Prime. Just stick that now. Uh, they think I'm quite cool. It's like, oh, I've got some cool points recently. Well, the kids, you know, they're sat in the back, sort of like. Oh. Because then they start singing Jingle Bells as well, okay. you know. The, the, the idea that he's just going to go out to the woods, not not just close by, they're going to hike. It's, it's like, it's like you know, just out in the middle of fucking nowhere, it's going to go and find a tree. Doesn't take us all, which we eventually find out. What is the idea in this? It's like, I love, I, think, I love the fact that he's just trying to be proper old school traditional. Let's say, hey, come on, kids. This well, is what I think we the problem is, the problem with Clark is he thinks with his heart and not his head. It's evident. Um, because they're like, well, where are we going, Dad? It's basically, it's almost like he's like, his heart has gone, tree, no, let's go. Everybody, car, in the car, let's go. We're going. But it's not just a tree, is it? it he says, oh, the we're going to pick up. The, the centerpiece, the, the symbol of our family's Christmas. And I'm talking about the Griswold family tree. It's the most important thing. If we've got that in the house, then Christmas can start. So it's it's like the symbol of everything that is Griswold Christmas. Yeah. And they're like, why don't we just go and buy me? So that's not how it works. We have to go into a field and hack one down and bring it home. That's the way it is. That's the way my dad did it. That's the way his dad did it. You know, you, you get the impression this is a, a tradition. I am I am never going out and get in a tree and chuck it on top of my Prius. I never make it anywhere. Don't. Don't do it. 
especially this tree with the roots and, and all. Well, before they get there, Gav, they get some jackasses right in their tail, don't they? Uh, of, I love these guys. A couple of hillbillies. Um, in, in the vehicle which uh, uh, was in They Live. Is it that car, is it? Is that Liv and Kurt Russell's job uh, car in Overboard. Brilliant. Well, these guys really are riding their tail, so they sort of go around him and he flips them the bird and then uh, then it's, they put the brakes on and he always crashes. It's kind of funny. They put these brakes... It's, it's, it's that old classic trick. I've had people do it to me before. I had some kids do it to me once. It's really weird. I was with someone else going, what are these, what are these teenage kids who have just learned to drive doing? And they're like thinking that I was really close behind them because I think the kid had learned, just learned to drive and didn't know perception. And I was like, I'm not even that close to them. They're doing the brake thing. Like, oh, oh, oh. And I was like, I'm not even near them. I don't know what, what they're trying to do. Or was it like, do you know what I mean? It's like, okay, I'll just slow down. Um, anyway, I've had that done. So these guys are doing this. These are your typical kind of, you don't want to piss them off. They've probably got a shotgun and a dog sick balls chopper type dog you know yeah he says to them well you wait and see what i'm gonna do don't worry he's, i think he says i'm gonna burn dust i'm gonna tell them to eat my rubber uh rusty is so i was trying <laughs> to explain to him that he, uh, yeah pfft, you can't even get the words right i don't think this is a good idea but but you know he's still gonna uh go for it because uh, yeah because he has a jackass right in his tail as he says yeah um, uh, well, they, they eventually run him off the road by tricking him into the path of a, a log lorry from Final Destination 2. So he he's, he, he thinks on his feet and he, he just pulls out. But as he pulls out, there's something you do when you drive, Dan. You, don't <laughs> you, just, look, you, don't, you look in your mirror. You don't just pull out. You go, huh? no, I won't go. There's a big fucking lorry on the other lane. I'll wait this... for that and then I'll pull out. Nah. No. So, so this stunt is something that I've seen in a Jackie Chan movie once as well. And what they managed to do is get, and it's probably attached, I should imagine. But they, they, he accidentally drives his car underneath a huge juggernaut, um, like the space underneath it, and then they're trapped. And uh, he's like, "What do I do? What do I do?" And she's like, "I don't know." He's like, "Well, I didn't mean to get us under here." And they're kind of driving along underneath this lorry. And he's like, "Well, how do I get out?" Well, he pulls out and slams off into a big bank of snow. <laughs> <clears throat> and they all survive because the next we see them trudging through the snow, uh, trying to find this Christmas tree. It's a ridiculous idea. <clears throat> His daughter's frozen. She Who's can't... carrying it? Him and that those four. Well, his daughter can't carry it because she's frozen from the waist down and her eyeballs are frozen. She, she can't see. It reminded me of if I tried to take Daisy out and stuff like that. I would hear every swear word under the sun. And it, do you know what I mean? I, I could, you can never get a teenage girl out there, I don't think. Happily. Yeah. <clears throat> well, like you said earlier... Um, how did he get it out? Did they get Bigfoot to pull it out eventually? How's they I, don't know, out? I don't know how they pull it out the ground. But, but, but that's the thing, though, because we're doing a reviewer's eye on this. I started doing logic, and I was like, I, stop, Gav, stop putting logic to it. It's just fun sketches. Yeah. Well, somehow he pulls it out the ground, and <laughs> the next shot the next shot is you on see the, the tree, which is about twice as big as the car, uh, with all the roots still attached. Uh, not it, not just the roots, like a whole mound of triangle of turf. It's fucking hilarious. Um, when he gets back, though, Todd and Margot happen to be out there. They're, they're, they're your yuppie, because we've got to say 90s here, yuppie kind of jogging pair. Like to, uh, they're, they're, they're the new type of when event, when we originally had like people going to like mineral vitamin shops and things like that. Do you know what I mean? When it's a more of a, only a certain amount of people do it. Nowadays, everybody does it. And stuff. they're really into their technology because they've got a fancy hi-fi stereo yeah, system. Yeah, yeah. You know. um, anyway, they, so they've got a certain uh, class that they feel that they are or whatever. Cousin Eddie really makes them <laughs> realise mm. there is definitely other classes. And... and <laughs> And uh, they basically see him and they're like, oh, my God, look what he's got over there. And obviously we see the neighbourhood rivalry. So they sort of say, hey, Griswold, uh, where are you going to stick that tree? <laughs> he says, uh, why don't you bend over and I'll show you. That's no way to talk to me, Griswold. Who do you think uh, you are? I wasn't talking to you. 
And it's just such a great exchange. And you know that although this guy's a bit of a softy, he will not take shit from these neighbours. Well, he's got a, a, a hockey mask on and a chainsaw rearing at, roaring at them over his head. Why don't you bend over and I'll show you? What a great comeback. And I, I never show you. People... I wasn't talking to you. It's so good. It's so good. Well, he gets the, the tree in the house somehow. It's all tied up with rope. And he says, here we go, guys. This is a big moment. And she's sort of saying, it's very big. He's like, yes, it is a little full. The, 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 a third of it is bent over because it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit in there. Will it looks the staff, like a square. Will the staff fit? And he's like, yes, I'm sure it will. We might need to trim some of it down, but um, it's fine. And he says, right. He's getting ready to cut the ropes to let all the branches um, settle. And he says, I give you the Griswold family tree. And and they're all looking like excitedly because the kids really believe in their dad, you know. And he cuts the ropes and it takes up the entire living room, smashes all the windows and um, engulfs him. He's inside it somewhere. All you hear is him say, there's a lot of sap in here, a lot of sap. And then he's in bed and uh with covered his, in sap with ellen and uh, they're just basically stuck to each other he's reading a magazine and his fingers are sticking to the pages then he sticks to her hair then he sticks to the lamp very and, funny but silly comic stuff and the next day is december the 14th my middle child's birthday and also the day of the grandparents both turn up at the exact same time they do before that though we do see clark at work with his tasmanian devil cup full of cocoa and this is where we find out he's talking to his um, colleague who says, oh, we should be getting our bonus check soon. And he says, look, I've got a secret. Yeah, you're right. Clark, Clark says, I've got a secret. Bill Let me Murray show you is this. his boss. Bill Murray's not his boss. Sorry, Bill. Uh, no, no, not you, Bill. That's later the segment. No. Uh, your, your brother was in the movie. Yeah. 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 Uh, Bill Murray's brother is his boss. And he says, so he sucks up to him a little bit. He doesn't give a shit. But he also shows his colleague, you know, I'm going to be getting this swimming pool. I've already put down $7,500 deposit on this. So when I get my bonus check, I can pay the rest. And then I can tell my family we're getting a, you know, for Christmas, I'm getting you all a swimming pool ready for next summer. And his buddy's like, wow, you you're really are the last family guy, aren't you? And then he sees his boss. It's like you said, his boss doesn't give a shit. He doesn't even know his name, calls him the wrong name. And as he walks off, he says to him, Merry Christmas, sir. And then he says to his all his sort of cronies, he says, Merry Christmas. Merry kiss my ass. Kiss my ass. Kiss his ass. Kiss your own ass. And he says sort of Happy that Annika. to each of them. Yeah. It's so funny. And then, he, then he's at a department store because he needs to get Ellen some uh, uh, a present. And he thinks, I might get Ellen some underwear, some sexy underwear. And this is where he just gets like uh, like a very uh, 80s, 90s man. This, this girl working in the department store <clears throat> is pretty special. She is hot. Yeah, she's right. She's hot as hell. <laughs> And uh, I've always thought that. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, he, she's flirting with him. And he keeps saying, he's keep, because she's very, she's dressed in a way that you really, your eye is drawn to her cleavage. Um, and she's very just, pretty. Uh, uh, blousing, <clears throat> uh, browsing for something. It's been nippy outside. Nipple, what, what am I saying? Why am I saying nipple? I don't know why I'm even saying that. And then <laughs> she says, um, can I take something out for you? And he just sort of has a breakdown. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> It's quite like you know this sort of humour. Then he uses he uses a pair of panties to dab his forehead. Yeah, doesn't he? It's so funny. Uh, Russ comes along, and says, "I see, you can't even see the uh, line, can you, Russ?" Nope, Dad. Mm. Well, before that, he's saying to her, "And oh, these are right. these are for my wife." But she's God rest dead. Her soul. She's dead. And he says she's dead. He's like, "Well, no, she's not dead, but um, you know, we're divorced. Yes, we're really divorced. We're not together." So he's like, "What? Are you, what are you even saying, Clark? You're just fumbling because some hot girl is paying you attention. You can't get your words out." Then she says to him, "The underwear I'm wearing right now is really high cut. Look, if I lift up my skirt." And she shows her whole thigh and bit of buttock to him and says, you can't even see the line. And this is where Rusty turns up and says, and he says, look, you can't see the line, can you, Russ? And realises he's been caught red-handed by his son staring at some girl's legs. Hilarious. Really, really funny scene. Really funny scene. But yes, then the in-laws, so Clark's parents and Ellen's parents, all arrive at the same time. Argument straight away. Oh yeah, um, and um, and it's shot really claustrophobic with real close-ups. 
they're all sort of shouting at each other, but it's not all arguments. It's like they've all got news, like, I've got hemorrhoids. Can you believe that? I've got hemorrhoids. And then somebody else saying, oh, I've got bunions on my feet. If I give you a shill, a dollar, would you rub my feet for me? And they're like, hey, you've grown, haven't you? And they're all sort of hugging and kissing each other. And it, I've been here before where families, big families meet up, and it's just... You just think, oh, I need a break from this. It's too loud. It's too noisy. I, I went for the first time. It's really bad of me because I've been living in the same village as my auntie and uncle for two years and I've not gone around seeing them. But I haven't seen them for fucking years. So I went with my parents on Christmas Eve to see them. <clears throat> and uh, it, it, it's my dad's uh, older sister. And it basically looked like my dad, shorter and fatter, with a black wig. Amazing. It was incredible. I will show you the picture sometime. It's, a, it's absolutely amazing. But I did a family thing, and I was really proud of myself for doing a Christmas family thing and not seeing a family member for many years. So I kind of related to this as well. My dad is one of seven, and my mum was one of seven. So I have quite a big family, lots of cousins. So particularly when we were younger, Christmases were very, very busy like this. Like Home Alone, I always relate to the Home Alone family dynamic because there was always so many of us in the house. Um, in fact, the first time I watched Home Alone was with about six or seven of my cousins. We all watched it together as the kids. But um, I've lost sort of contact with them all over the years, but reconnected recently with a few of them. And I had the same thing with my dad's brother, who I hadn't seen for a good 15 years. Him and his wife, my auntie, came around and they met the kids. And I was just staring at them thinking, you're my dad. But you're bold and you've got a moustache. Yeah. That's the only difference is if my dad shaved his hair and grew a moustache. And then when he left, my uh, my wife Alice was saying, fucking hell, your Uncle Les is literally just your dad with a moustache, isn't he? I was like, yeah, he really is. It's yeah. funny when you see that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, Rusty says, sorry, Clark says, Russ, let's go outside and put some lights on this house. Hell yeah. So we get some funny moments now where he's... It's slapstick. Yeah. It's, it's he's nice ladder slapstick. Yeah, yeah he's know. falling off of ladders. He's stapling his hands to things. Yeah, yeah, it's classic stuff. I, it's very nice when he really upsets Todd and Margot's stereo system. Um, yeah, that's brilliant. When he, cause he, uh, Explain he, it, explain it. Well, he, he slips off the ladder because he staples his glove to the... Um, he's using a big staple gun to staple the lights to the gutter, but he slips off the ladder, grabs onto the gutter, rips the gutter off of the the sort of the side of the house, which is full of ice. This then fires the ice javelin, as I've called it in my notes, at, at such a velocity that it shoots across the road, straight through the window of Todd and Margot's, and Into the late, smashes the... their latest 1988 stereo system. Yeah. Banging which, officer or something. Which is hilarious because when they get home, they it's the, a mystery. The the mystery is there's a hole in the window. Well, something must have destroyed the the stereo, Margot. The stereo is destroyed, and then there's a pool of water on the well, floor. I don't understand it. And where did this water come from? And this this is an urban legend that is it a murder? You do a murder with a noise. Well, no, no, they found um, uh, someone's dog was found dead in the garden or in the house. Yeah, in the house. And there was a puddle of human piss next to it and a hole in the ceiling. And they realised that an aeroplane had flushed or dis discarded its toilet waste. I don't know if this is true. It's an urban legend, like I say. And apparently yeah. the urine froze yeah, I know on the saying. way down, smashed through the window, killed the dog and then unfroze. And they tested it, and it's like, well, it's not dog piss; it's human piss, multiple human pisses. What? And they couldn't figure it out for ages. The so it's the kind dead of dog and the human piss. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't believe that that's a real thing. But yeah, it's a, it's fun, and it's a fun thing, and it's another moment for them to sort of have something bad happen to them because we don't like these yuppies because they don't like our Clarky. Uh, but it's funny. It's fun. Um, he goes to turn the lights on with everyone there. Let's do a drum beat. <laughs> And he gives, a, he does a speech, doesn't he? He says, um, he says something along the lines of, "I'm so, gr I'm so grateful to have you all here." Yeah. And, you know, I dedicate this house to my entire family of Griswolds because that the, the lights on this house demonstrate my love. And he does joy to the world, like you say. Plugs it in. What happens? Nothing. 
Nothing happens. Uh, it did, is, did you uh, check all that bowl parent, chart? His parent in laws are just like, see what a waste of time this is, kids. What a wa- I, she waste says, of resources. I hate me for it. What a waste of resources this is. And um, yeah. his daughter says, he worked really hard, Grandpa. And his grandpa says, yeah, and so do washing machines. Yeah. <laughs> what a bastard. Anyway, it doesn't work. They all go back and he's kind of pissed off. And uh, so leave it, it and it's just like, oh, for fuck's sake. His son says, really good try, Dad. You did really well. And they can't figure it. He said, but we checked all the bulbs. It's very interesting on the front cover of the Blu-ray. That doesn't actually happen. No, it doesn't, does it? I've always thought that. Where, I've never liked where, that poster. No, where Chevy Chase on the front in a Santa costume, uh, uh, and he's been electrocuted by the uh, light bulbs, which would imagine, unless it's a deleted scene, I don't know. No. But where would you get the idea from? It happen. To me, that looks more like... Um, a poster for the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Do you know what I mean? It's not. It doesn't yeah, look. It's not even Chevy Chase. It's just mm. someone's just drawn that up, and it doesn't look good. I've never liked that poster. No. Um, but yeah, it's whole family supportive. We go back inside, and the children have to sleep together. So Russ and his sister have to sleep in the same bed because all the grandparents are sleeping in their beds. Um, not great situation and it's only going to get worse when cousin eddie turns up um yeah and in the morning he goes back up into the attic yeah because he's a great dad and he wants to hide the presents in the usual hiding spot and this is where he finds the mother's day gift that he bought for um ellen many years ago from one of the kids however his mother-in-law locks him in the attic and they will go out for lunch. It's, in fact, his father-in-law says, "Well, I don't care about Clark. I gotta get out to lunch to take some uh, to have something to eat because I can't take take my pain relief without eating." So they all go off and they leave him stranded in his pajamas in the attic, which obviously it's very snowy and it's very cold. Can it, we get a little, it, a little bit more slapstick here? Why? <clears throat> I guess he's trying to be this traditionist, and that kind of explains it. But it's like. Who's going to be looking for presents, you mentalist? Why don't you just go put them under the tree? He just wants to keep it a nice surprise. That it's trying to do... I think showing that old present that he'd forgotten which is up there is obviously <laughs> showing that it's a tradition that he does on the, uh, and it, he just wants to keep that. But it just, it's just like, was not a surprise. Just put them in the fucking under the tree. Well, my theory is this, is that every time he <clears throat> questions whether he's doing the right thing taking all these people in and trying to have this big family Christmas <clears throat> excuse me um, he gets a life lesson given to him from the universe now the life lesson here is he's locked in the attic mm. he goes through loads of old boxes and obviously he wraps himself up in old city clothes to keep warm but he also finds all the old film footage Christmas 1955 he starts crying when he reminds himself of the fun Christmases he's had with his mum and his dad and aunties and the kids when they were younger and this is the universe saying look just stop and take a moment and remember how great Christmas can be with the family you know I know this seems quite pressurised but look and so he starts crying because he remembers because he's such a good guy and such a family man and I think that's what that's what my theory is is that okay. you know he, he he's reminded here at this point so I, he's got a new lease of life i, I think it's a, a reason to show that that so it's a good set up for that i suppose but it's just like why are you, why are you putting, hide them in the loft but anyway but, anyway but, it does help with some slapstick of him falling down the loft when uh, they the, come the, back well the comedy timing is he sat there crying watching this and then all of a sudden his wife opens the attic and he's sat on the loft hatch and falls out yeah. so it's great comic timing. It's quite a cheesy montage when he's looking at the uh, footage and stuff. Uh, uh, that's just me now, but, you know. Yeah, but I love it. I know, I get, you see, I get you see that's the it. difference between you and me. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty fucking cheesy. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it inspired, I've written here, it inspires him to, to try and be better uh, and try and be even even nicer to his family, even though he's already fucking nice enough, if you ask me. Uh, he tries his lights again that evening and, he does. Um, and they come on but then they go off and then they come on and he's getting more and more frustrated here because he can't figure out why they and the reason being is that one of his in-laws keeps going in the attic and whenever she flipping, turns the light on it that ridiculous uh, adapters all plugged up like a pyramid 
it's about a hundred adapters it, it, plugged into one extent extension. It's like that one spark, and you're gone. And we get a fun moment now where, when it does turn on, the floodlights come on and blind his neighbours who are in the middle of about to get down to some saucy sexiness. <laughs> yeah. But they um, they then smash their bottle of wine all over the floor. Then the lights go off, so they're blinded. Then they come back on and he falls down the stairs. Basically, they destroy their house because they're blinded by Chevy Chase's floodlights. Clark, Clark, just being Clark, somehow destroys their life, pretty much. Yeah, just being Clark. Just being Clark, and they just happen um, to not like him. So that's why I think the je- I think the message there is: don't dislike your neighbour because accidentally he will ruin your life. There's a very John Hughes moment here where he, just before the lights come on properly, because his wife saves the day. Ellen is the one she that figures realizes. out it's the switch. But just before that, he kicks the shit out of a, a big model Santa and reindeer. Um, uh, and this ca- is. They, he punched a uh, he punched reindeer and broke his small broke his little finger, finger didn't he? but they kept uh, filming and uh, uh, kept it in but this is also really reminds me of something that Steve Martin would do like in Planes, Trains and Automobiles when he loses his shit you know it's a very John Hughesy type thing and it's really funny yeah. but then like we say Ellen saves the day she figures it out she turns it on he starts hugging them all one by one each family member mum dad can i call you dad even though you're my father-in-law and then all of a sudden he cousin eddie and he doesn't notice it initially and he gives him a hug and then he looks at him and goes cousin eddie and he's like clark looks great clark love it and he thinks what the fuck and then you realize cousin eddie's there with his wife and actually just stands there for a while going eddie eddie he can't quite believe it and that's his brother-in-law um and Eddie, Eddie is, uh, yeah, living on the fringe. Well, he's not his brother-in-law, he's his cousin, isn't he? Or cousin-in-law or something. Well, yeah, no, this is it, actually. Can you work this out for me, then? What's well, the it, relationship? he says, well, he's cousin Eddie, so I'm, I'm guessing he's just his cousin. I, I don't I don't really know. Because Art is... His father-in-law. Says, yeah, his father-in-law. So, yeah. it, so Beverly D'Angelo's wife, Ellen's mum is so, maybe so that's, he, a, that's ellen's brother but why is he called cousin eddie maybe he should be uncle eddie i don't know i've no, never really got it, that i know it's kind of confusing why he's cousin eddie he's got a great big rottweiler as well called snots yep we call him snots because he's got a, a problem with the sinuses and that's all he does and then he says, roll over and you let your uncle clark stroke your belly and he says um word of warning if he starts going at your leg, just let him finish. All right? Just let him finish. The commentary he- for this movie is really random. I wanted to watch it beforehand, but the commentary is Randy Craig. Quaid. Why have you got so many people? <clears throat> Randy Quaid, Beverly D'Angelo, um, uh, Rusty, um, and then Randy Quaid's wife. Yeah, but they do the everything together. And then the producer. So many people. Well, who does what all together? What do you mean? Him and his wife in real life, they do everything together. They're like attached at the hip. Oh, what? Remember that's we talked... Randy Quaid's wife? Oh, no, no. In, that's why she would have been... Oh, sorry. Not his real life wife. The woman that plays his wife in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. I misunderstood <coughs> you. And Randy Quaid. It just seems a, a lot of people. But I don't know. And to paint the picture as well, Randy, cousin Eddie and his wife and two children and giant Rottweiler, they are living in an RV, a recreational vehicle that is huge and is parked on Clark's driveway. It's a real eyesore. And he says, um, Clark, if it's all the same for you, me and my wife would like to stay in the RV because, you know, it's been a long drive and we've got some catching up to do in the bedroom. But um, if you could just have the two kids in with you. And then he says to his wife, don't forget the rubber seat sheets and the gerbils. And you think, oh, boy. I, ne- I never hear, me- never knew you said gerbils bit. Yeah. The rubber sheets and the gerbils. I'm sure he's kidding, but... Um, it's a dark sense of humour. I'm not going to say that to Sarah. Well, one of my favourite scenes is next, where Cousin Eddie and Clark are drinking eggnog together. 
and he's sort of they're chatting away. Clark seems very annoyed. Uh, can we just take a moment to appreciate it, cousin Eddie's uh, sweater oh, combo? Man. He's got like this. Roll he's, got neck. A tur- he's got a turtle neck around, black turtle around his neck, so it goes on. But it's not a turtle neck, which is a long sleeve t- top underneath a short sleeve top or whatever or sweater. It's just a rectangle going down the stops. It's almost like a, a, ch- a church uh, thing collar piece. Yeah. And then he's the got clerics, this white, yeah. white top on top, which is all creamy coloured tops. Oh, and he's boy. sort of walking around accidentally breaking things in Clark's house, you know, drink as much and, as he can. And he's never been to the house before, so he's very excited to be there. And he says, oh, I'm really excited that we're going to be staying here for a whole month as well. He spits his eggnog out, Chevy Chase does, because he's not happy about that. And he says, well, let me know if there's anything else I can do for you, Eddie. Um, you know, maybe drive you out into the middle of nowhere and leave you for dead. One of my favourite lines, he just kind of half says it under his breath, and because Eddie's so dumb, he doesn't really catch it. Yeah. No, no, it's okay, Clark, you're doing enough as it is. Thank you, buddy. Someone I know I do this to. Because for whatever reason, they have a selective hearing. Like, literally, uh, say something to you and you go to res- respond. And, I think I know who this is. And they just carry on talking. And you're like, what? So I will then carry on saying stuff. And I'll say, you're fucking not even listening to me, you fucking idiot. I'll just carry on going and they won't take any of it in. It's incredible. Um, well, it's sledging time, Gav. It is sledging time. One of my so, favourite highlights <clears throat> as a child in this movie. So Clark works for a company that makes food products. Uh, and one of the products they've made is this really good grease or oil for your pan for cooking. And he basically smothers this sort of dustbin lid, metal dustbin lid in it. Because he says, this will make it go 100 times faster. And his kids are all excited. Everyone's like, wow, you're going to go really fast, Eddie. And he's... Uh, cut, Sorry, Clark. And he says, yeah, yeah, you watched me. I'll go first to make sure it's okay. Well, well, well. Randy <clears> doesn't <throat> want to because he's got a metal plate in his <laughs> oh, head. Yes. But the metal plate, had a, he had a problem not long ago. It was an accident or whatever. And they had to change the metal plate. And there's this other stuff, which is a little bit softer. And if you really push in there, push there, you can feel my brain. Have a little push. Well, he says, he says it's because I... Basically, whenever um, my wife would use the <laughs> microwave, I'd pass out and piss myself. Um, so we had to replace the metal plates. It wasn't very good, really. And it's like, wow, okay. And also earlier, his daughter, he says, this is my daughter. You remember her? Look at her eyes. Her eyes aren't crossed anymore. So funny. She fell down a well. Her eyes got crossed. She got kicked in the head by a mule. It uncrossed her eyes. So this family are just a bunch of... It kind of gives you an impression. I remember years (laughs) ago as a younger person just like imagining... These dudes live now in nowhere. Wherever and just, it is like, they live. And just doing, like, running around, playing with snakes for the fun to do for the Getting day. Getting kicked in the head by a donkey. Just, you know, and just random stuff. Yeah. Well, he climbs onto this greased up dustbin lid sledge and he says, right. I think he says something like, surf's up, dude. Catch you on the flip side. He tries to be all cool and say this, like, surf dude talk. And then we get this ridiculous sort of special effect of him just a lightning flying down at light speed. And there's like fire behind him, (laughs) like back to the future car. Um, And he ends up sort of crashing into a a bin outside the Walmart. And yeah, it's just another chance just to show a silly scene. Like I said, it's a series of sketches. Not a lot comes from it, really. It is what it It, is. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it is fun. Like you say, there's a scene that everybody likes in this, really. There's always, good, you know, everyone's got their favourite scene. Cut to night time. And uh, he's dreaming about his bonus. He's stood in the kitchen on his own. Every, the rest of the family are asleep. And he's looking out the window, looking at the garden, imagining what it'll be like when that pool's there. And he's imagining all of his family in their swimming outfits. They're all really happy with him. He's the hero because he's bought a swimming pool. And then his fantasy goes a little different doesn't it Gav well it, it, but he's watching all his family then it's his cousin Eddie standing there with his beer and vest tucked into his uh, uh, budgie smugglers uh, yeah his uh, swimming <laughs> trunks and uh, just waving to him and then it just changes to the lady in the uh, the lingerie sh- sh- department store and she he's starts stripping off for him and he's watching uh, up against the bedroom window uh, the kitchen window really pushed up against the window and then all of a sudden his little niece walks in 
<clears throat> and interrupts him. Thinks it's Father Christmas because he's in a red dressing gown. Yeah. And she starts talking to him about Santa. And this this is where it's revealed that actually Cousin Eddie and his family are in a really bad And that's time. why they're there. They've got no money. I don't even think we've got money for presents. Um, I was told that there's no Father Christmas, there's no Santa Claus. But is that true, Uncle Clark? And he says, look, if you believe in something, then it will happen. And I promise you, you guys are going to have a great... So again, life's getting got him down a bit. But he gets reminded by this little girl that there is a magic to Christmas and he can make her Christmas. If he helps him, his cousin Eddie and his wife and kids out, it's going to make him feel better about things. So he, th- he thinks, right, okay, I'm going to help these guys out because he's too, you know, he's too manly to sort of tell me he needs help, perhaps. So I'm going to just tell him I'm going to help him. Shit was full. Well... Is that the next bit? Yeah, oh, next morning. It is the next bit. Oh, I was going to say the bit where the little girl says... um about he'll be shitting rocks shitting bricks and he says oh you shouldn't say that she says sorry uncle clark he'll be shitting rocks <laughs> and she just changes it slightly but yes the next morning the yuppies the yuppie one of the yuppies is leaving for a jog and he smells something in the air classic scene everyone knows this it's the most quoted line from this whole film yeah. what's he doing i have to describe it uh, cousin eddie's there in his uh, uh underwear um, and a, with a beer, a, a with a beer, beer and a hat and a cigar, and a big old pipe in his slippers. Big old pipe uh, emptying his waste, his chemical waste toilet, chemical waste toilet. Uh, just going all over the place, and he's uh, smoking a cigar, just doing it like it's just kind of every everybody does it. And he says, "Shit, it was full." Just looks over to the neighbors. Hey, how you doing? Shit, it was full. And he's burping away, scratching uh, his ass. Yep, cigar. Somebody says to him, you know, that stuff's flammable. You shouldn't really do that. Well, that will come back later on, as, as we expect in a John Hughes film. Um, and they go shopping. <clears throat> and in the shop, Clark basically says, look, what's been going on with you, Eddie? And Ed, this is where Eddie says, all right, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. It's been a really rough year. We live in the van. We don't have a house anymore. Um, I haven't even got any money to buy my kids presents. I don't really know what to do. I'm kind of, I've come to you really for help, but I haven't really been able to, but, to but, ask for it. But we do know that for seven years, he hasn't had a job because he's been waiting for a managerial position. He's been waiting for a management so position, Gav. It's just, just <clears throat> taking any handouts. <clears throat> so basically, fuck him, get a job. Also, two of his, he's got two older children. And one of them is yeah. in a rehab and well, I can't remember what the other one's doing there, but they've both got sad stories. So their family's really been through the ringer. <clears throat> um, <job>. So <laughs> he says, he says to him, look, okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'd like the opportunity to give you a Christmas and I want to get your kids some presents. And for a couple of seconds, Eddie says, <clears throat> oh, Clark, I, I can't, I can't do that. <sighs> And then he pulls out a giant list out of his pocket and says, wow, well, here's a list of all the things that we need. Um, and I'd like to get this from my wife. And also, I'd like to get you something, Clark, if I could. Something really special. And Clark's thinking, for fuck's sake, why did I say I'd help him? But he's a good guy, Gav. Yeah. He's uh, a good guy. I, I, I don't know. I, I, would, I understand doing it for the kids and that, but I'd still be like, why don't you got a fucking job? That would be my conversation. Don't worry about management, managerial positions. Just get a fucking job. If you're flipping burgers, you're still fucking working. If you can empty a chemical waste toilet, you can do anything. Yeah. While smoking a cigar and drinking a beer, you can do anything. Exactly. Well, it's December 24th, and crazy auntie and uncle arrive. Uncle Louis. Uncle Louis, is it? Louis, yeah. Yeah, and, and auntie, the crazy old deaf auntie. And they're ancient. They're like 90 years old. In real life, she's 82, and he was 61. And in real life, she's very, very famous for being the voice of Betty Boop in the cartoon. Betty Boop? I'm not going to start singing. No, that's Betty Boo, the rapper. Betty Boop, the cartoon, as in the boop, boop, beep, doo. That one. You know the one I mean. I know, I know. I thought they were both connected, but no. Well, I think Betty Boo named herself after Betty Boop with a P but Betty Boo is a rapper I was well into her in the 90s Betty Boo she's cool mum I only know one song she had, I've got her album on cassette in the kitchen fair enough just there you go you didn't expect that on a Christmas episode did you 
talking about Betty Boo cassette album you have, no. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, they're crazy. They're deaf. Um, he smokes a lot of stogies. She keeps farting. And there's a lot of comedy mishaps around those two. Uh, he accidentally pulls Uncle Lewis's wig off. <laughs> and she's, then tries... she's basically giving him a Christmas present and it's her cat wrapped up. Yeah. How does he get says, the cat in a box? She's meow. This this present's meowing, and she says, "Oh, basically, what what Auntie does is she she hasn't got much money, so she just picks things from around the house and wraps them up. But she gets confused, and I think she's wrapped her cat up. And at this point, Eddie comes out and goes, "Ah, oh, Clark, this one's leaking, and it's green." And they're like, "What? What is green?" And he just sticks his finger in whatever this is, Eddie, and he just goes, "No, he doesn't." <laughs> Beverly, uh, uh, Ellen sucks oh, her finger right. and he sucks her finger. <laughs> that's right. It's like, oh. And he goes, lime. <laughs> it's, it must be a key but like ima- pie Imagine that, like, just just, be- just picking up stuff around your house and wrapping it up and giving it to people, but forgetting what's what and then just giving out people. Yeah, but why is your, items from uh, your house. But I think the worst thing here is that your cousin Eddie sucks your wife's finger in front of you. It, is, it isn't good. But then it's Eddie. You know, and you, when you've got Eddie in the house, you can just expect anything to happen, really. So it's dinner time. It's turkey time, Gav. Joy old turkey. And again, he's like with the tree, like with the lights. He's got an announcement. He says, you know. I always remember watching this and being mm. like, what? What? You made a Christmas dinner on Christmas Eve. What's, what are you making tomorrow? A Christmas dinner? Like, who the fuck? What? So you're just going to let your wife just fucking spend all day in the maybe kitchen? Maybe they'll do. Well, maybe they'll make Bubble and Squeak on Christmas Day. So he gives his big speech um, about the turkey, and then he says, but because this is Auntie's 80th birthday, a very special one, I'd like you to say Grace. And she goes, Grace? No, Grace died 25 years ago. Yeah, yeah, and they sort of say, no, he, he wants you the blessing. Old, co- old shenanigans. Um, and so she then says, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, because she doesn't know what's going on. Cousin Eddie stands up and salutes. Uh, and eventually, we cut the turkey. Gav, describe what happens when he puts the knife into oh, the turkey. It, it just all breaks open. It's There's nothing. It's just dried up inside. The, fr- the outside's great. It's just, how did they do that? I don't know. It's a special effect, isn't it? But it's... No, no, like, not that. I was like, how would you c- cook something and it, and it she, like, cook the inside? She, dr- she cooked it out for too long. Yeah, well, but the outside again, was perfectly fresh, though. That's the thing. Would you have the f- outside in cling film or something? Do you know what I mean? But again, he's so optimistic. He says, no, 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 I'm sure this will be fine. It's um, it's just a little dry, that's all. And then he goes, oh, I can see the heart. And then it cuts to them all really trying to chew. And all you can hear is like crunching and chewing. And they're all yeah. drinking water and pouring gravy over it. Apart from Eddie, who's like eating all the potatoes and everything he can because he's just Cousin Eddie. And yeah, the, the turkey is absolutely disgusting. I think they find a cat hair in it as well, don't they, or something? Um, yeah. It's awful. And talking to the cat, we do see the cat now being attracted to the tree, playing with the ball balls, and then it grabs the fairy lights out of the tree. Yeah. Uh, takes them under a chair to play with them. Yeah. Um, so we'll come back to that in just a moment. Um, love this moment. Again, Clark trying his best to help Cousin Eddie's kids. He says, oh, guys, I just heard an announcement on the news that a pilot flying in from New York City just sun- spotted Santa flying over in his sleigh. And they all go, oh, what? And what does Cousin Eddie say? You, you Are you is sure? That, are you really real Clark? Is that? Yes. He says, is that true, Clark? Really <laughs> believes it. <laughs> so sweet that he tries to do that. Um, and then we get the dog underneath the table. The whole table starts vibrating, and he says, "He's just choking up uh, stuff that he's been eating because he's been rummaging through the bins in the kitchen." He says, "He's just yakking on a bone." And then you hear, Bleh! and he goes, "There, he's got it up." So the dog's thrown up on the table. He's smashed the the trash can out in the in the kitchen. So there's food everywhere. And um, while they're cleaning that up, uh, Uncle Lewis says. If you're not doing anything productive, could you get me one of my stogies? Yeah. So they give him his off. they give him his cigar, and he lights it near the tree, and poof, the whole tree goes up. Yeah. He, he doesn't even notice he's done it, 
And uh, the says, cat's been electrocuted as well. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. The cat has been electrocuted. Well, first of all, Uncle Lewis turns around and his back's on fire. So they jump on him, stop, drop and roll him with a rug and put him out. And then they realise, what's that smell? And they pull the armchair down away and there's what used to be a cat underneath, <laughs> underneath the armchair that's just completely fried. And the next shot is just Cousin Eddie and Clark le- taking this burnt armchair outside and, Clark, and, and Eddie saying if you don't mind Clark I think I could probably uh, clean this up a little bit actually you know uh, do, you want me a, good chair? do you want me asking how much it was brand new I think I can refurbish it for you but he wants it for himself really doesn't he yeah <laughs> poor old Clark it's not it's not going right and uh, he, you can see now the mental breakdown is starting to happen now it's just starting to happen ever so slightly um, he gets a delivery from, from work now because he's found out that all his colleagues have already had their deliveries. Where's my check? And this guy turns up and says, look, I'm really sorry. I was supposed to deliver this to you yesterday, but the envelope slipped down the back of the seat. But here it is. And Clark thinks, right, this is my chance. It's all falling apart. The cat's dead. The tree's gone. But I'm going to tell my family about the swimming pool. And he, so he says, everybody, this here, this envelope contains the check but my bonus check and i wasn't going to tell any of you this till tomorrow but i'm going to buy a swimming pool i've already put the money down for a deposit and they were they're all like wow this is incredible mum's like clark you're the best i love you and he says and i'll tell you what if there's enough money left over i'll fly you all out here in the summer and we'll have a great time and they oh, oh wow this is amazing um he opens the envelope and it's a it's year's a subscription, subscription to yeah. to a jam or a jelly as they call it in the US uh, of the month club so basically you're getting a jar of jam if you're in the UK every month for a year wow and when he <laughs> the only person who thinks it's amazing is Eddie he's like that is the gift that keeps, keeps on, on giving, giving Clark. <laughs> but he is gutted because that was you know that was going to be the swimming pool what can he do no bonus so he starts losing it. He starts necking eggnog now. And he gives a big speech now. He says, um, uh, you know, what do you know what I really want? I want my boss right here with a big red bow on, uh, on him uh, so I can tell him what an asshole he is. And he calls him. He starts swearing. He says everything under the sun. Apparently you know, the it, other actors had uh, signs around their necks with just words on swearing words. So if you see? watch him, he's looking up, looking, uh, occasionally look up at words amazing um yeah he loses it <clears throat> and the family you know are upset with him cousin eddie drives off in his rv we don't understand why initially clark goes out and says i'm gonna get it this is it now the, the, the mental breakdown has started he gets his chainsaw he cuts down just a random tree in the front yard and brings it inside yep. his wife's like honey are you okay and he's like i'm fine he goes on as he's walking across the landing the um top of the banister is a bit loose just cuts it off with the chainsaw yeah you're right though this is where he has a mental <laughs> breakdown and unfortunately as much as i like to find it funny now look at it i'm like oh god because I, i've had a couple of weeks ago i felt oh god, i was having a little one and it's not the nicest of feelings gonna tell you so yep. you, you watch it now looking at that like that's like oh god that's actually kind of dark next time watching i'll be like oh god he's having a mental breakdown it's not the fun that's not a fun thing then they realise that there's a squirrel in the tree. Yeah. Just to add to the commotion. And he says, get my well, hammer. Well, when he cuts it down, Todd, Todd and Margot get, uh, say, do you think we oh, should have got a Christmas tree this that. year? I don't know. They're a bit cheesy and corny. And then all of a sudden through the window just comes the end well, of the tree. He says, where would we even get a tree at this, at this late time. hour on Christmas Eve? And a, a tree Smash. comes through the window. Yeah. So he's destroying their Christmas again. He gets his. He wants his hammer. Great scene with the squirrels on his back when he turns around and says, "Where is it? I think he might have left, but it's on his back." Chases them around the house a bit. The dog runs around with them a bit. It's all very slapstick, but it's fantastic stuff. Um, and then the dog chases the squirrel. The woman yuppie, what's her name? Mar- Todd. Margo. Margo. Margo says to Todd, "March on over there and punch him in his face." He's like, "I can't just oh, go over to attack you're him." You're not man enough to do it, and I will. And she stomps on over there and bangs at the door, but she doesn't know there's a, a Rottweiler I've chased a squirrel around a house inside. So she gets a face full of squirrel. Whoop! And then and a, a fucking face full of Rottweiler. Jesus Christ! The weight of those dudes. 
she goes back to to Todd and he's he's such a chicken shit because he's let her go over there and she goes back all her clothes are ripped she's got bruises and cuts she and he fucking, says yeah what happens to you so he, she knocks him out yeah good good for her um, we get a second big rant here now because they're planning on leaving and he says where do you think you're going nobody's leaving nobody's walking out on this fun old fashioned family Christmas we're all in this together <clears throat> he says this is a full blown four alarm holiday emergency and he's like we are staying together his dad gives him a bit of a pep talk and he says look Clark you're a great dad and you're better than this everybody's a bit upset with you because you've been shouting at everyone he like brings him back down to earth he says, you know, we we need to, it's fine, you know. Mm. And then all, all of a sudden, he says that to his, he reads the night, the night before Christmas, doesn't he? He says, all right, let's read this. So they all sit around. It's a cute moment. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house. And he starts reading it to them. Again, Gav, it's a tradition. It's funny because I <clears throat> had to do it to Charlie. Insisted. Daisy was like, oh, okay. And it's a Lord's tradition. Like, Every Christmas like, Eve. Uh, whatever. But for her had to do it and i do it yep. every, and they're like it's just he does it every year come on it's just yep. like all right calm down but as he gets towards the end of the story he says oh there's a man in the pajamas with handcuffs and cousin eddie what what's going on and cousin eddie took his words literally and went and kidnapped his boss and has brought him uh back to his house with a big red ribbon on him kicks him in the living room and he says, oh, it's you, Chris. And he's like, it's Clark Griswold. He's like, that's what I meant. And sort of they have that's this backwards and forwards. That's a good impression of him just then. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and they sort of have this backwards and forwards. And he says, she says, oh, I'm so sorry. It's our family's first kidnapping. And, um, and eventually the boss comes to realise that the it's little people, dick. yeah, the, it's the little people that matter, really. And he's he's given them all a year subscription to a jelly of the club jelly of the month club whereas they used to get like this giant bonus and, and something i really believe here which a lot of companies don't do is clark says people come to rely on their christmas bonuses as part of their salary and you can't just drop it i've worked for you for i think he says like 17 years or something and i've had a bonus every year and you just decide this one year no but with no like you know there's you don't give us any warning and he says oh maybe i've been a bit of an asshole but just as they come to this moment the police sort of storm the house these guys SWAT team start kicking the windows in and they hold everybody at gunpoint um first of all though they do take they do kick in todd and margo's house don't they yeah. of course they do yeah um they come inside and he says i don't want to press the, i don't want to press charges i can't do it again <clears throat> he says but i've come to realize i've been a bit of a dick and his wife says don't tell me you didn't give your staff a bonus this year. And she's, why, he's why, like, yeah. Why did his wife not get dressed before she left the house? It's the weirdest fucking thing. It's like, you, honestly, a couple of minutes you could put something on, just your underwear. It's very bizarre. Who knows? Hmm. Maybe, she, maybe she was feeling saucy. <laughs> um, but yes, his, his boss isn't pressing charges. Everything seems fine. And then, of course, uh, someone lights a cigar outside. Um, how does the flame? Where does the, oh, Lewis lights yeah, another Lewis cigar. Stogie. And it, let's not forget that that Santa Claus and reindeers the model is sat on, right on top of the sewer where cousin Eddie's been pumping his shit. <laughs> and that's, when that's, Lewis, that's the expression. Lewis lights his cigar, and that Santa Claus explodes and flies off. And the kids look up and they go, "Look, Santa!" And it's just the, the reindeer sort of flying through the air on fire. Um, and the model Santa goes flying, and Clark says, I did it! And yeah. he's going to get a swimming pool. The music plays with Christmas. You sound like you ran, uh, the guy that sings the Toy Story songs, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a friend in me. Yeah. And that's the end. And like I said to my dad, and like I said earlier, I've never related harder to somebody in a Christmas film than I have in this one because 
you know, I can't relate to John McClane. I can't relate to Kevin McAllister, but I can relate to Clark Griswold trying to hold it all together while your family, especially when there's a lot of family members. That's why me and Alice did a very low key one this year with just me and her and the kids. Last year, there was 11 of us at my in-laws and it was chaos. It was so many people. It just sounds too much. It's just hell. Um, I, I love you all if you're listening, which you're not, thankfully. <laughs> But it is too many, you know, and everyone's sort of worried about what everyone else is doing and thinking. Whereas, yeah, so Clark Griswold, bless him. I love him. And this is definitely the best National Lampoon's movie, I would say. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. So there we go. Anything, any other thoughts on it? Uh, no, uh, I think we've got it pretty much. I do like this film. It's a very entertaining movie. Um, and I do like to try and watch it most years. So, yeah, yeah, it's a great one to watch. And um, like I said, I've got very happy memories of watching this with you, of all people. Um, you know, with an eggnog or whatever we were drinking, probably anything and everything we could get our hands on back then. Um, and, you know, slowly getting a bit more drunk is box, on, probably on a boxing day or something we were watching this. I don't know when I used to come over yours, I can't remember. We used to do fake must, didn't we, when I come round? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In between your birthday and New Year, we do like another Christmas or sometimes early in December. Yeah. But yeah, there we go, guys. If you haven't seen this, go watch it. It's a Christmas film that you can watch from sort of November to January, I would say. But also, if you have seen this, go watch it again, because it's definitely worth a rewatch. Thumbs up from Gav, I should imagine. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thumbs up from me. And a big old thumbs up from uh, Cousin Eddie. Save the neck for me, Clark. Cousin Eddie. Save the neck for me, Clark. Jesus Christ. Yeah, but he likes to eat squirrels. <laughs> yeah, he says, where's Cousin Eddie? He usually eats these things. <laughs> no, he, no, he's found out they're high in cholesterol, so he's <laughs> taking a break from them. <laughs> oh, so, we, shall we come back to see you out the show? Well, I think we've got a little Mr. Murray who wants to chat first. Oh, of course. Of Bill? Course. Sorry, Bill. He didn't mean it. No, no. All right, then. Well, we'll come back for that, won't we? Uh, here's, right. here's Bill. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. World of the Strange. Of the strange. Ho, 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 world of the ho, 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 strange. There we go. Thank you very much, Bill, as always, taking time out of your busy Christmas schedule to um, just do the intro and the outro of World of the Strange for us. We really appreciate you doing it. Thank you. I and think he's no, pretty hammered, but... He's got that mistletoe on his belt. He's got that look he sometimes gives us when he's, you know, when he's a bit horny. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's got a mistletoe on his belt, and he's supposed to kiss under the mistletoe. Like not... Cousin Eddie's dog, when he goes mm. to town on your leg, just just let him at it. Just if let... Bill Murray starts humping your leg, Gav... Just let him finish. Let him finish. I'm saying to just let him finish. It's easier. Cut the balls. Now, I've got a list of similarly to Clark Griswold's family. Some family Christmas has gone wrong, which we probably shouldn't laugh at people's misfortunes, but they, these people have posted these online because in hindsight, they're laughing at the the craziness of the situation. So I've got a few of these to read to you. Right. <clears throat> it's funny, last night there's murders. Okay, go on then. Here we go. So the first one says, I was opening presents with my then boyfriend in front of his huge religious family. <clears throat> We'd been together for some time, Dildo. and we all thought, he's going to propose to me. They all waited with bated breath, and I opened the envelope from him, and I thought, he's, got, he's put a lot of thought into this. Is this going to be like a clue? Is it going to be like a treasure hunt? <clears throat> no, nope. the envelope contained a gift certificate for laser mole removal. Wow! Laser, so there's a mole well, somewhere well, on a body thought, that I he thought. doesn't like and he wants it gone. Yeah, I thought you'd like this. She said, I couldn't decide whether to laugh or cry, but we broke up a few days later. Wow. Wow. How about that? <clears throat> Laser mole removal. Here's the next one. My uncle got sent a letter which arrived a couple of days before Christmas from his 18 year old son that he didn't know he had. He told us at Christmas. So say that again. 
My uncle got sent a letter which arrived a few days before Christmas. He opened it on Christmas morning and realised it's from his 18-year-old son that he didn't know he had. Wow. So he told us all at Christmas. It's because at 18 now they're able to go and find their true parents themselves. Merry Christmas, family. I've got a kid I didn't know about from 18 years ago. Imagine that. I dread the day. Dread the day that a mini dad knocks on the door. I don't think that's going to be a problem with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I just don't think that's going to happen. Uh, years ago, here's the next one. Years ago, I was dating a guy for a few months. Christmas came around, and it was that awkward time where you'd only been seeing each other for a few months. So I thought, what do I get him? Do I get him something nice? Do I get him something small? So I thought, you know what? I'll splash out a bit, and I got him a GPS system. I thought, you know, it's thoughtful and it's useful and it's not too sentimental. It's perfect because we were only a few months into our relationship. Not bad, Gav. Not bad. No. He gave me a used MMA magazine that he'd read. <clears throat> I don't even like MMA. Well, no. He, Nor have I... he realised, oh, shit, I better give us like... Here you go. Oh, hang on. There's more here. I don't even like it one little bit, nor have I ever expressed an MMA or even talked about it to him. Uh, I think he, uh, on the other hand, he loved MMA. Uh, so he tried to move on. I said, thank you very much. I put the magazine down and opened the next present from him, which was a DVD that had already been opened and the wrapper was missing. He went quiet and then said, look, basically I got a bit bored yesterday. So I opened your DVD and watched it. And she said, right. And you got me the magazine because you wanted to read it he said well yeah basically it was a magazine that I've already read and I just thought you might like to read it wow how, how lovely of him that's very nice on to the next one when I was a toddler we were supposed to go to Savannah to visit my mum's family for Christmas but we couldn't my dad said I've lost my wallet it turned out what had actually happened was some prostitutes with an S that he'd slept with had stolen his money, ID cards, and all of the cocaine he'd been carrying. So we ended up going to on holiday without him. Unsurprisingly, my parents were divorced later that year. So, so what? He went on. A, where, uh, he's on holiday with his family, but he'd been banging prostitutes. Uh, sex no, 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 no. No, he couldn't go on holiday with them. Oh, because he lost his wallet because of the sex workers at home. He said he said to them, "I've lost my wallet," but it turned out he'd had his wallet stolen by some prostitutes who'd also taken all of his ID and some cocaine that he'd been carrying. And his mum, her mum and dad, got uh, broke up many months later. Merry Christmas. Yeah, at least it's white. She was a toddler when that happened as well. Yeah, white Christmas indeed. Um, she was a toddler when that happened as well. So, so imagine he, being he three or four. The sex workers. Well, we had a little kid. He had a big old orgy, basically. Mm. He's a nice, nice man then. Here's the next one. So this was my family, thank God. But one of my friends. So my uncle. Her, sorry, her uncle got caught cheating at the dinner table when his phone buzzed. And her auntie saw the message coming in. She started screaming and crying and throwing dinner at him. My that my friend, her their daughter, started to laugh. So her mum turned on her and started insulting her, saying, "You'll never get a man. You're too ugly." Then the mum stands up and started shouting at everybody. The whole family starts to get involved, calling everyone backstabbers and low lives. And then because I was the friend of the family. The mum then turned around to me and said, and who the fuck are you, you intruding Brit, uh, bitch? Wow. On, Chris, on Christmas Day. Yes, that was a fun one. I've I'm, never been I'm back there on Christmas again. I'm glad I don't have families and all this sort of stuff going on. Well, I don't have family, but yeah. Imagine Chevy Chase in these situations as well. He's just he's trying to hold it together. Yeah. My husband's stepmother gave me a 36-year-old... At, a, at the time, gave me a kindergarten-sized bat backpack for Christmas. When I opened it, she said, I actually bought that for a child about five years ago, but the child hated it, so it's been in the closet for ages. And I saw it and thought, I know what, you'll like that. None of us like it, though. We all think it's very ugly, but we think you might like it for Christmas. Wow. That same year, they gave 
my three children gifts totaling fifteen dollars all of them still had the for sale stickers on them so they're all bought in a sale meanwhile she'd bought her biological granddaughter a three hundred dollar unicorn <laughs> they made sure we all knew it cost three hundred dollars they pointed at the sales stickers on all of my children's presents and said they were great deals weren't they then they said now can you all leave the room for a moment so that we can have some nice pictures with my daughter and her unicorn nice what a lovely family yeah Growing up, this is the next one. Growing up, as we always did, we went to my auntie and uncle's house for Christmas Eve dinner, family tradition. It was usually full of a house, full house, normally about 35 people. Big family, Gav. That's a lot. <coughs> Christmas Eve, we're all sitting down to dinner with my auntie. That's a lot of cooking. It is. So my auntie, whose house it was, got into an argument with her sister. It escalated to the point where they were screaming at each other and my sister my cousins and i were being herded into the basement to go and play with something and try not to listen to the adults yelling play with something in the basement <laughs> it ended when my auntie yelled that she was sick of the family drama drama it's time to come clean she announced that my oldest cousin is actually not the daughter of my auntie but the daughter of the other auntie basically when she got when her auntie got pregnant she was too young and irresponsible to raise her so the other auntie stepped in who's a bit older okay mm, on christmas day revealing this amazing in front of in front of 35 people happy christmas short one one christmas my brother and father got into a fight the cops had to be called and my brother was arrested and spent three months in jail for beating up my dad so much so her brother Fuck. beat up her dad Wow. <clears throat> the next one is a true Clark Griswold story. Um, a few years ago, one of my brothers or sisters said something that pissed my mum off so much that she just cracked. She pushed the Christmas tree over, went down to the basement, got a saw, came up and started sawing it into tiny pieces in front of us all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Couple more. 2012. My family had reached boiling point that year. My brother had been kicked out of the army. I was a 17-year-old stoner about to drop out of school. My parents' marriage was a shit show and almost ripe for divorce. And my sister was over from the US for the holidays. The mood was bad. In the middle of Christmas dinner, the doorbell rang. My dad shouted, who the fuck disturbs a family on Christmas dinner night? We were all thinking the same thing. Without hesitation, my brother gets up from the table and disappears for a few minutes. After a while, my angry dad stomped out of the room and went out, out to find who the unwanted visitor was. It was a, a man buying weed from my brother on Christmas day. <laughs> on Christmas night. Amazing. You can imagine my dad's reaction. Little did we know that um, if my brother hadn't gotten up from the table and ensured that my dad would drive off afterwards to cool down, that he would have told us of his year-long affair that night. This is her dad. As well as the child he was about to have with his mistress and the fact that he was planning on leaving. He did actually tell us this a week later on New Year's Eve, though. Wow. So that saved their Christmas day, but a week later... They found out that their dad was having a, a baby with another lady. Amazing. What a family. <clears throat> Two more stories. Short ones again. I, I love this one. <clears throat> My grandmother went out to the garage to smoke a cigarette after Christmas dinner. She intentionally slammed her arm in the car door, breaking her wrist in the process. You might ask why. She was drunk. She said, I wanted to see if my pain medication was working. Fucking hell. So she broke her own wrist in the car door to see if her pain medication was working. Fucking dickhead. Was we it? spent... Well, no. Well, might have been. And even if it was, it doesn't make you superhuman. No. Uh, we spent the rest of Christmas night in the emergency room. Wow. And the last one is one involving poo. Lovely. And a church. I went drinking with my friends on the 23rd of December. 
the 24th we went to midnight mass things were going well but then it suddenly hit me i got the shits 10 minutes into the service my guts forced me to let out a silent fart but it had the power to melt candles it was such a bad smell luckily i got away with it because there was a baby nearby and everyone just assumed the baby had pooed in its nappy amazing then my gut did another noise and i thought oh i realized what's gonna happen so i had to run with my butt clenched to the church bathroom there is only one male and one female unit the men's had someone in it so i ran into the women's and i man i kicked the door open and shat myself i looked back to see the damage on my on my trousers then i realized there was no toilet paper so I took off my jumper and my jacket <laughs> and wiped my ass with my jumper and my jacket. Oh, that's just... <laughs> I then went outside to wait by my parents' car. Would, wouldn't you, though... T- I know it's a bit, maybe a bit more disgusting. Would you use your hand and then just wash in the right wash basin? I, think I know was, that's kind of disgusting. I but think like, the diarrhoea was so like, bad. Yeah, I think it was so bad that a hand's not just gonna you couldn't. So it was it must have been all over the bum cheeks. Well, yeah, because he says then Everywhere. I wait. I waited outside my parents' car God. in the free in the freezing cold in just a t-shirt because my jacket and my my uh, jumper were in the bin in the toilet. Oh, the person that clears the bin. And then my parents came back outside after the service. Shitty clothes in the bin. And they asked me why I had poo all over my trousers. I told them the whole story. They laughed at me the entire way home on Christmas Eve night. But don't just don't sit down. Yeah. He had to lie on the back seats, front, front down, I should imagine. Yeah. Fucking hell. Well, there we go. Nice. Clark Griswold. I think if I were... Happy I'm gonna be, I don't even want to pick which one of those I'm going to be. I'm just going to leave it there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. Happy shitmas indeed. Bill? Bill, should take us out as we come happy back yourself. to the end of- a very Murray Christmas. Oh, boy. And a happy Bill year. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of Strange. Next week, though, give me Ira. Hairless pets. Weird. And we're back. Back again for Christmas time. Ten years of podcasting. Yep. That's it. That's all I got. I haven't got any other lyrics. That's why we work on it. Excellent. Well, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you, Gab, and to all our listeners. And happy 10-year anniversary all over again to us. Fantastic stuff. It's been a, it's been a wild ride. It has. It's very enjoyable. National lampoons and all that business. I so love, um, I love putting words in short ears. This is the last episode of 2023, so let's talk about what the next three episodes are going to be as we enter into a new year. First episode of 2024, episode 147, will be a patron pick. Patron pick. Uh, Matthew Godley, it's your turn again. You, as we discussed, have selected Flash Gordon and Dead Man Shoes. Ups and downs, highs and lows there. Motions. Yeah. Um, after that, Gav, you old git, it's your birthday episode. I know, 32. Ep- episode 100. <laughs> He's only 32, guys. Mm. Even um, that sounds old. It does, really. Uh, episode 148, Gav's birthday episode. It's going to be Sorcerer. No, I'm 47. It's going to be 47. He's not really 32. No. Yeah, mugs. Sorcerer and Studio 666. Sorcerer and Studio 666. Two completely different films. And I've not seen either of them. Amazing. And after that will be episode 149. And as mentioned previously, um, any episode we can for the next year, we're going to do director specials. And we're going to kick that off with episode 149, which will be an Adam Green special. Looking at this relatively newcomer to the horror game. He's, you know, he's... 
It's yeah. been around a while now, but not... Yeah, I was going to say, it's a good 20 years. It's still fresh-ish. Um, we're going to be covering two of his films. Frozen, not the Disney sing-along musical thing. Um, the one in, where they're in the lift, ch- ski lift. And Digging Up the Marrow. Bit of Ray Ray Wise in your life there. And actually know a lot about Adam Green as well. Yes, well, that's you know that's what's going to be fun to discuss. Mm. So that's what we're doing next. Uh, patron pick, Gal's birthday, and an Adam Green special. Lots of fun to kick the year off, Gav. Hmm. I thought you just had a dog bark. Was that? Was that? You have a Not, dog there? I don't have a dog here. Weird. It's okay. Just, just yakking on a bone. Yeah. Just snots. Uh, well, Gav, I think what I'll probably do at this point is say some admin stuff before we say our goodbyes and Merry Christmases. Anything you want to add before I do that? No. Brilliant. Thank you. Everybody have a great <laughs> New Year. Uh, I'm glad everyone's happy if well, if you are happy. Oh, but, don't do this all over again. Uh, exactly. If you're not happy, then I'm happy that yeah, you're I know, because I'll get all confused again, so carry on. Thank you. <laughs> I shouldn't have just said anything. <laughs> I can see you're really regretting opening your mouth. Just <laughs> He's just shrugging his shoulders, everyone. Um, as always then, and as we have been for the last 10 years, we are the Podcast on Haunted Hill, a proud member of Legion Podcast Network. Uh, you can find out more about them on legionpodcast.com. That's the network we're under, and all the other shows that are part of the network. If you want to go over to Facebook, you can search for the Podcast on Haunted Hill. Um, we've got a community that has been running for 10 years, funnily enough. You can join that community, um, share what you're watching, trailers, discussions, and lots of other fun stuff, memes and GIFs as the kids like to do, uh, including me. Um, And also Legion have a podcast page as well. Just Legion Podcasts, easy to find. Uh, You can also email us. Uh, Our email address is the podcast on Haunted Hill at Outlook.com or you can message me directly on Facebook uh, if you want to become a patron or just ask us questions or anything really. Tell me to fuck off or just say Merry Christmas or ask Gav about his long balls. Any of these things, it's interesting. Um, We're available wherever you're listening to us now. He's looking at me and shaking his head. Uh, Wherever you're listening to us now and any other podcast platforms such as Spotify, YouTube, Podknife, Apple, Podcast Addict, Podbean, and the Partridge in a Pear Tree. Uh, We're also on Instagram, the podcast on Haunted Hell at Insta. Joy to the world. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And... We mentioned the Sanctuary Moon, Star Wars Sanctuary Moon, which is a Deadbolt Films production. Deadbolt Films is our production company. Deadboltfilms.com is the website. Deadbolt Films is the YouTube channel. And at Deadbolt Films uh, is the Instagram thing image. So if you like a bit of that, then jingle bells, jingle bells. <laughs> Love this, thank you. Uh, and finally, Patron. Patron. Rudolph the Red Nose Patron. Whoa. <laughs> had a very shiny no. uh, thank you very much to our patrons I'll thank you all individually in a moment thank you Thank you. but if you want to become a patron and help support the show that would be fantastic, you don't have to do it we do this for free, but if you do do that even for as little as a pound or a dollar a month it really really helps us, it helps buy equipment merchandise rent and buy films all that kind of stuff to keep the show ticking along nicely takes the pressure off us slightly there are rewards if you become a patron you get a free t-shirt um, you also get your name read out in sometimes a silly voice at the end of the episode you get access to exclusive content as well as our entire back catalogue yeah. of episodes and you get to probably most excitingly pick your episode uh, when it's your turn to pick two films and tell us why why you've chosen those films and all this kind of stuff and uh quite possibly as i'm wearing one i'm wearing a tie-dyed t-shirt that i was given mm. by my middle child I stole one of the uh, fresh t-shirts and tie-dyed it for me and it looks kind of good so there's a chance it might be a choice of a tie-dye t-shirt yeah a bit of tie-dye action taking it back to the early 90s <clears throat> good stuff um so patron 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 if you want to become a patron just go to patron or uh, and search for the podcast on until here or alternatively message me and i can help direct you there um as always thank you to our patrons of thank you all individually now by name in a very christmasy fashion <clears throat> so first of all oh, 
Oh, oh, thank you, Don Collier. <laughs> Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, oh, oh Matthew Godley. Oh. Have, you, have you been a good boy this year? Oh, have, has Father Christmas given you a good tickle? Ooh. Oh, right, this might get bad. Oh, oh, oh Jamie Jenkins, oh. you've been a very good girl. Oh, did you have a good pull on a cracker? God, this is Gav saying these things. Obviously, oh, right. Kevin S five. Oh, 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 you very good boy. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells. <laughs> Sarah K. Oh, no. oh, oh, Sarah K. I hope you enjoy your presents. Ooh, roast potatoes. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, Rachel! Oh, oh, Rachel! I hope you get a white Christmas! <laughs> oh, but, yeah. Oh, 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 RJ McCready! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what a good boy you've been! Oh, sit on my lap! Oh, <laughs> oh RJ! <laughs> oh, RJ, you have oh, been a good boy! And finally, oh, 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 Lex Boo! What a wonderful girl you've been this Christmas. May your days be merry and bright. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I've always wanted to be Santa. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. Merry Christmas, Patreons. I hope you guys all enjoyed that. And uh, I hope Santa comes down your chimneys and empties his sack all over well, your place. Oh, the classics. The classic. But listen, go pull your cracker and whatever it is you do, stuff your bird, stuff your turkey, and... Uh, Pour gravy over everything and everything. Drink, the drink sofa, some egg, the chairs. Drink some egg mug and uh, s- smoke some chocka chocka lola. Chocka chocha. Smoke some chocka chocha. Ch- smoke some chocka chocha and drink some egg mug. And um, may your days be ber- merry and bright. And uh, you know, maybe your days be buried. buried may your days be buried under the sun. <laughs> 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 Let's finish this now. Let's finish this. Listen, uh, it's a good night from from Clark Griswold. It is. It's a good night from Cosnetti. She is full. <laughs> and it's a good night from Snots yakking on a bone. Indeed, it is. And it's a good night from you. And it's a good night from me. And it's a good night from Santa and his little helpers. And it's a good night from me. Good night, everybody. What does Snoop Dogg uh, say at Christmas? Don't know. Ho ho ho. Good night, everyone.